You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Okay, we're going to get started um, for the Town of Brantford Board of Finance public hearings for the for a budget for the fiscal year 1920, fiscal year 2019-2020, and tonight is a continuation of the public hearings that we began last night. Before we get started with our presentations, I just provide a short overview of the budget requests. Before us, a total $116,643,112, which represents a 4.1% increase in expenditures. We are, right now are estimating revenues of $13.8 million, leaving $102 million. 837,000 to be raised from taxation, which is an estimated 3.5% increase in taxes. We are estimating a grand list of $3.565 billion, which is an increase of approximately $13 million in grand list, which will, which will bring us to an estimated mill rate of 29.52 are a 0.9 increase in the mill rate. Again, these are preliminary until we go through the process, which will be the public hearings. The Board of Finance will meet on Monday night and cut the budget. We will then re recommend the budget to the RTM. They will deliberate and pass a budget sometime in late April, early May. We will come back in May and set the mill rate. So also in addition to that, um, Right now, the total town expenditures are 5 percent, which includes operational capital. The Board of Ed is at a 2.1 percent of operating increase request, and that includes a contribution at this point to the teacher's retirement. So with those comments, we will begin tonight with the animal control budget on page 66. And I will ask that anybody who wants to, and from the public who wants to address the board, uh, that they come up and use one of the microphones and introduce themselves. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And so tonight we have. Uh, Laura Bourbon, the animal control officer, and you have someone with you? Marilyn Vallette, our chairperson. Marilyn, the chairperson, okay. Welcome. Do you need copies, or do you have them? We have copies of the budget as it's in our budget book. Can we get those? Yeah. Thank you. Do you have enough for everybody? First, the For them, yes. I think Jamie has all. So this is a revised budget that reflects a reduction in requests? No. <laughs> it reflects um, quite a big increase, actually. Okay, so the, so all of my comments are off by the 20-some-odd uh, thousand that's your additional request. So, so the, your request is right now uh, 358,702. <laughs> Yes. Well, from the town's portion, it would be 163,662. Right. From Laura. our standpoint, we look at the transfer in, and then we also approve the entire expenditures. So, okay, you could proceed with your presentation. So, um, the reason for the large increase is we are asking for our program coordinator, who is currently part time, to be promoted to full time position, and this is due to the fact that uh, the person is trying to complete 
a whole bunch of job duties in a 19 and a half hour time frame. Um, however, with that said, we are utilizing him more hours than he's allotted for because we have so many programs going on, as well as um, he helps with fundraisers and um, adoptions and so many other things. Thank you General, cards. There's many different Excuse me for pieces. a second. Yes. You know, I'm sorry. If I just, maybe I make, Laura, why don't you go through the budget that's in the book and then go to the budget because the census is still working so everybody could follow because they're trying to follow. I think what was just presented to uh, that would be my suggestion, gentlemen, if that's, if you prefer that's to do it that way. That's fair, so because I think all the RTM members actually have the original budget in So the present okay. your original budget, but then I think you should talk about the, the needs in the future and what you're continuing to explore. So the really only difference is, Laura, is on the personnel side? Yes. Okay, so why don't you go through your budget, your, as it's in the book, thanks, Jamie, and then we'll, um, we'll take your other comments, okay? Okay, so um, the typically when I do this, I just go through the changes. That's where that's, you want me to go. Yeah, that's fine. That's okay, fine. so uh, the Brantford warden fees will be going up. Our, our adoptions are constantly increasing. Um, typically, the North Brantford contribution increases around 3%. Um, and North Brantford adoptions are going down. We don't seem to have as many animals coming in, or if they're coming in, they're actually going back to their owners. Um, and summer camp fees are going up. We are uh, including another week in our summer camp program. Uh, so now we're hosting seven weeks of summer camp. And um, just so you guys know, in 2010, we started that program and it was two weeks and we had about 30 kids and now we're up to close to 350 kids. Um, and they come from all over the state. So they come from everywhere from Hartford. We even have some New York City kids that come every year that their parents end up vacationing here so their kids can attend the camp. So it's a very popular thing. Um, donations, we've always kept the same. Those are um, just general donations that people aren't requesting to go into a specific account. And um, so the regular wages and salaries in this is um, we are adding another camp counselor because we're adding the additional week. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the regular wages. Uh, that is uh, due to the increase because of the raises. Um, seasonal and part-time help, that's where you'll see the camp counselor added in there. Um, it's an additional camp counselor for the additional week that we have on. Um, where else? Uh, the overtime went down because of the, um, we, we actually don't utilize that much in overtime dollars. So it went down a little bit. And the other small increases that you see are um, because we are, needing more uniform and clothing um, and advertising and printing and office supplies. So those just went up by $250. Okay, why don't we ask questions on this for a second. Um, so the summer camps, does the summer camp fees pay for the summer camp expenses? Yes, it's self-funding. It's self-funding, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one question I had. Um, second question, um, the dog licenses. How many dog licenses do we have? Around 900. And how many dogs do you think we have in town? A lot. <laughs> so, not to put either you or Lisa on the spot, but whose responsibility is it that that uh, that state law is complied with as far as dog licenses? Well, it's our responsibility to go out and enforce it. So okay. if we are checking on a dog for a welfare check or just because someone's made a complaint, we check to make sure their dogs are licensed. Or if an animal control officer happens to be at, say, like the supply pond and there's an issue going on, they request to see dog licensing. Okay. So it's kind of like on an ad hoc basis. Okay. Uh, we also host a rabies clinic where we license dogs at that point in time as well. And um, we have, uh, we license at the animal shelter as too. So we've made it more convenient for residents to be able to come and license their dogs since they can't license on the weekend. So they can come more openly on Thursday's night so they can come up and license there as well as on the weekend now too. <coughs> but we have no database that cross checks as to who has a dog and who has a license? Just based upon the previous years of people who have licensed. Right, right. What do, what do other towns do or cities? Similar to what we do. Um, they look to see if the dogs are being licensed. They go back in time. Um, a lot of times if you're called to a house and you see dog bowls out there and the person's saying they don't have a dog, you try to have the conversation with them about 
you know, why the dog bowls out there and is their dog licensed and vaccinated. Right, and don't, do they have, do you give them an enforcement action in order to license the dog? Yeah, typically what we do is we'll give them a period of time to license and comply with us, and then if they don't, then they receive an infraction. Okay. Um, questions from the board on this? This budget as presented, Charlie? Joe? Yes. I would just like to give some input that if we were accepting credit cards and had an online um, portal where they could uh, register dogs online, I think we could increase our licensing. Um, but we're just not there yet. Do other towns do that? Yes. And, and they, they, get the they have a higher success rate. Okay. Some of the complaints we've received from residents, just not even just residents here, but just members of communities, is that they wish that dog licensing was like once every two years or every three years. Like if for a rabies vaccine, for example, you get your dog at the first time it's good for a year, and then the second time it's good for three years. They wish that licensing was sort of that way as well. But that's state statute, correct? There is proposed legislature, legislature to go to three years. There also is proposed legislature to license cats. OMG. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Um, questions from the board on this operating budget? Hi, hi Laura. Hi. If I look on page 66 one, and I look from this year to the you requested, I mean, you're adding another assistant animal control officer and raising it more than by four and a half percent and you're adding another shelter cleaner is that correct so the shelter cleaner has actually always been there and i apologize i must have dropped it off at some point just when i was going down the line and adding ones instead of it being a two i must have just gone down and added it as a one because the, there was always two shelter cleaners there it oh, just so it just dropped out from a mistake that i made last in the year current though it shows only one right right in 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 this past year's budget but yes. in this, in this, in 2019, 2020, it's reflecting what it should be. The the two shelter cleaners. Okay, there's. Are there? Is two new to the animal shelter, or is it always been two? Two have been there. Okay, for, but it doesn't show in the current budget as two. Right. And the total doesn't show that. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, that was my fault. Just a general question: Do we take animals from out of state? We will help. So like during the hurricane in Texas, they, uh, animal control officers reached out for help to see if we could assist, and we will help if we can. Okay. And have they, we done that? Yes, we have done that. And they Harvey fundraise. Too. What? We help for Harvey too, like other. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we help. If there's, if there's a natural disaster or something's going on, we absolutely will help. And they fundraise and pay to have the animals vaccinated and get health certificates and all those types of things to get them up here. All right. Do they uh, pay for the transportation? They do. Well? They pay for everything. Really? Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, um, Laura, why don't you comment on your other additional staff member I think you're looking for? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yep. So um, it's actually a current staff member. It would be just going from part-time to full-time, and that's the program coordinator position. And um, the reason for that is because we are so busy at the shelter. We have so many different programs that go on, and we offer so many different services to our residents. Everything from pet food pantry, when people, um, we have people in town who have um, gotten divorced or have cancer or have lost their home for different reasons. They can't afford to um, pay for pet food, but we fundraise and supply it, and our program coordinator runs that as well. Um, other things like um, they can't afford to vaccinate their animals. Uh, he helps to run the rabies vaccine clinic um, and coordinate all these different things. Um, we also help residents that are seniors that can't get their animals back and forth to the vet because they may not be able to drive anymore. Um, he helps coordinate those types of things. So there's tons of different programs, everything from reading to the animals to our volunteer orientations. Um, with the increased hours, what it would allow me to do is not only expand our programs and bring in more revenues, but it would also allow me to have somebody who can help with everything from deposits to um, statistics at the shelter um, to just the business end of it. And we're asking really for an entry level position. It would be about 36, close to $37,000. Um, where many other departments that have department heads have an assistant director, and I don't. So it would be really kind of a support for me at the shelter. Okay, 
Thanks, Laura. Questions with regards to this request? No. Questions from RTM members or members of the public? So, um, okay, we appreciate your presentation. Thank you. Thanks. Next is Public Works on page 37. Total request of two million four hundred and eighty-two thousand eight hundred for operating. Welcome, Gary. Oh. Actually showing a decrease. <coughs> yeah, the uh, operating budget is showing a 0.6 percent decrease. Um, numbers have been moved around within the budget to reflect the needs of uh, certain items in the budget. Um, personnel, um, slight increase in uh, regular wages and salaries, uh, seasonal part-time slight increase, uh, decrease in uh, longevity. Large decrease in uh, accumulated sick pay because of retirement uh, the last year. Of the um, the street street lighting uh, reduction. Yeah, is actually, yeah, um, redu reduction in street lighting. Um, just a couple, of, just minor items, you know, minor changes throughout the budget. Okay, uh, nothing spectacular here. Questions from the board on this operating budget? Bob? Uh, yeah, Gary, is that the reduction on the lighting, is that due to the energy program that we put together? No. No. no, no. no. The, these are the street lights. Street lights fall under the public works budget. So yeah. it's really just looking at the current rate of what we're paying. And, uh, okay. Right. And so we don't have an issue we've had a few years ago where no, all no. of a sudden we had another invoice come in. Okay. Great. Okay. Other questions on the operating? Questions from the public or RTM members on the operating budget for public works? Not Gary, we'll move on to the capital, page 37 6. Request yeah. of 875000 for various projects. Yeah, the capital, uh, there are no increases proposed. Um, everything basically remains the same, requested dollar amounts. Um, downtown center maintenance stays the same. Road improvements resurfacing for $25,000. Uh, sidewalk replacement, $65,000. Um, we could need to, some ADA handicap ramps uh, around town. We're going to need to improve a lot of those. Uh, Seawall repairs, same uh, apparatus fund, 275000 the same. And uh, town parking lots, we have uh, 60000 in that for a few of the town owned parking lots to redo, repave. And how many miles of road do you uh, resurface with that 425000 Oh, <laughs> Huh? Yeah, so well, we try to average four or five. But four or five it, a it year. It all depends on the. Um, typically, we've been doing some Miller pay, Miller pay, but we did have a couple. Uh, um, I think full. You had one reclaim last year, or a section of reclaim, full yeah. reclaim. Yeah. That typically that'll drive up the price. Now, how successful is that uh, that hot rubber sealant, crack sealing process? It it prolongs the life of the. The roads. You, you're talking the crack ceiling, right? Yeah, like we did on uh, Mill Plain, right? Specifically, that was um, one area of Mill Plain was just milled and paved a few years back, maybe three years ago. The other section was a while back, quite a few years. I was it was before me. Not needed to be crack sealed. Um, that'll prolong the life of the road. Okay. Um, questions on the capital? 
Bob? Sure, we have any apparatus purchases coming up? We've just purchased uh, two new trucks, um, F-550s, uh, basically Mason dump trucks, uh, smaller trucks meant for, um, you know, plowing smaller areas of town. Um, we ended up going with a larger size, though. We were going with a 450, we went with a 550, uh, two 550s to carry more, more capacity for salt. Um, so they're not the smaller trucks aren't running back and forth to the salt pile. Um, we bought a few new pieces of equipment, uh, mini excavator, um, track loader, skid steer, um, looking at a few other things, attachments more or less. And do we know what we have in that sinking fund? Left? Excuse me? Do you know what's in the sinking fund that's left? I'm sorry, I do not. The apparatus fund? Yeah. About $625,000. Enough to take care of whatever else might come down the line. The, the thing to keep in mind, the out years are the, you have um, the loaders, which are probably 230,000 a piece. Yeah. So if you look at where this was projected out a few years ago, we've actually did smooth it out a little bit from what was probably there three years ago. Uh, we have extended that out, but <clears throat> doing it in a way where we're mindful that we have those larger expenditures coming up. So, um, you know, you see in the out years, it does get up to 400000 We may even be able to tweak that down a little bit more. I think in a previous year, we were probably spiking upwards of 450000 So we're, we're slowly dialing that down. Okay, thank you. Okay, other questions? <laughs> Charlie? I think Gary, on the... Um What's it called? Uh, the road repairing of 475. Is the asphalt is it is the cost of the asphalt at 60,000 included in that 425 or 475? For the for the town parking lots, that's a separate. No, uh, for, for the town paving of the roads. The 425,000. Yeah, 425 then. You're In other words, I look at if there's a cost for asphalt of sixty thousand five hundred. That's from the material on page thirty-seven point three. Uh, that's the operating. I think, I think yeah, that's repairs. That's repairs. Uh, so like that's repairs. Not in everything. the right. Okay. So the that's four seventy-five is when we do a road repaving program. Right now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Other questions on the capital items. Questions from RTM members, members of the public? <coughs> all right, Gary, I guess we're all set. We'll move on to the next one, which is yours as well, Docks and Recreational Facilities, page 47. Yeah, there's only, uh, again, a very slight increase of 0.7%. Uh, uh, within this budget. So, request of eighteen thousand seventy-one dollars, increase of one hundred nineteen dollars. Uh, yeah. This covers some seasonal part-time help, repairs and maintenance for the docks, <coughs> and then yeah, actually the cost to put the docks in and out and store them. Yeah. And then your other supplies. What, what do you use that for? There's all types of hardware to go along with the the docks, including uh, some have. Um, Stainless steel pipes for like basically the moorings. And stuff. Okay. Questions from Gary on this budget? Anybody? Board members? Members of the RTM? All set. Thank, Thank you. you. Next is solid waste. Solid waste and recycling, page 39. Of 
$3,185,296, increase of $18,517 on the operating. Correct. Thank you. Uh, Dan McGowan, Solid Waste Supervisor. I'm joined today with Paul Munez, the Chairman of the Solid Waste Management Commission. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. Um, yeah, so uh, it, we're, we're showing a 0.6% increase in our, our budget. Uh, most of those are contractual increases, uh, you know, increase in, in salary wages, the union wages, uh, increase in the collection costs for, for trash. Uh, the, the, we took the major hit on that contract last year where we, we jumped from uh, whatever, 700000 or so up to the million dollars. Um, so it's just a, a slight cost of living increase that, that was built into that bid. Um, the material handling fee is going down uh, over $20,000. That's uh, mainly due to the uh, Preston diversion that we dealt with uh, uh, last month. Uh, that was uh, with the Covanta Bristol. Uh, Taking that trash to, to their plant at a lower at a lower tip fee, um, condo association rebate uh, went up because that cost is tied to that uh, Schweitzer uh, collection cost, um, and state fees and testing is the other big uh, fifteen thousand dollar reduction. That was money we had put into the budget last year to deal with the uh, renewals of the permits, our, our industrial stormwater permits. Uh, we haven't actually that that. Renewed permit hasn't been issued by the state yet, but uh, but the money is is allocated from last year's budget, so we didn't need it in this year's. Okay, questions on on the operating side here, Charlie. Just Dan on the on the condo association association rebate, mm -hmm. eight thousand. Why did that change? So the that fee is tied to the collection cost per unit of of a residential house. Um, and so it takes the overall cost that we pay the town hauler, um, you know, hometown waste Schweitzer, um, and divides it by the amount of condo units there are, or divides it by the amount of residential units there are to get a per unit cost, and then multiplies that by the amount of condo units there are in town. So as the cost goes up, the rebate goes up also. Okay, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Which is counterintuitive. Yeah. Yeah, how do they take that, uh, that the change? Well, it's, getting... benef it's beneficial to the condo like association. Yeah, I think they like it, yeah. Yeah. Okay, other questions on this operating budget? And do you want to touch on the fees? The fees are uh, estimated at 221500 The revenue? Revenue side, yes. Um, yeah, uh, it's, you know, the... the Main item tickets to the transfer station escrow. That's what their various companies pay us to utilize the facility and, and tip fees. Um, sticker revenue uh, is is forecasted to, to go up. This coming fiscal year is, uh, is one of the two-year cycles where people buy their uh, resident stickers. Um, so we anticipate seeing more revenue there. Um, and and sale of town uh, property. That's the that's the sale of the recyclable material that comes in. Unfortunately, with the market uh, where it is, um, we're, we're forecasting a, a lesser revenue in, from that stream. We're still showing a, a net positive in revenue on recyclable income. Right. Um, right. Which is kind of a credit to, to Dan and prior members of the commission. The fact that we have not gone to single stream still allows a high quality recyclable, a portion of which we do obtain revenue for the, the cardboard paper. Sure, sure. Thank you for that, folks. Um, no capital items? No, no, no. I mean, we have a capital line item to do some transfer station improvements, um, but we're not looking to add any new revenue to that. Where is that, Chief? <laughs> Um, we're not requesting any yeah, money, so I don't know if it's in the budget packet or, or it's just uh, existing. It yeah. might still be in What's that? I didn't see it. I didn't see a request in here. It's not. Well, we're not requesting we're any not money. Oh, you're not? No. Okay. No. So yeah. it's zero. Zero is the request. Okay. I got one more. Yeah. Charlie, you got another question? Hey, Dan, just on 39.5, mm -hmm. just explain what is holiday wrapping paper program supplies? That's the, the holiday wrapping paper program that we've uh, done for a number of years that uh, was the brainchild of Etta Hanlon, uh, Doug Hanlon's daughter, who was an RTM member. 
Um, it's the uh, it's the uh, lawn and leaf bags that we buy every year, and, and, and here the uh, the instructional sticker too. It's something that uh, I think we rolled it out five or six years ago. It wasn't it hasn't been on the budget line item for a, a few years. We did get a grant to offset those costs. Um, that grant has expired, um, but it's to it's to buy the lawn and leaf bags and the stickers, which we uh, give out to all K through eight students in town. Oh, okay. um, and it's it's there for them to put in their their uh, paper goods that they create through the holiday season, and then put that in the recycling stream. It's to get it out of the trash and and into the into the recycling. Right, so we didn't see it last year. I thought it was in there last year. Yeah, I think um, it wasn't. There. Yeah, was it? It wasn't. Yeah. I, yeah, I apologize for not knowing uh, exactly sure. It, it, there were two or three years it wasn't in there with a, when we had a grant covering it. Um, I, I can't about, remember if it was in there last fine. year or not. Innovative fine. program. We will it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were getting money from the state to fund it. It increases our recyclable paper at Christmas. I heard it. It's okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. Any other questions from Dan? Or Paul? Robert? Uh, Dan. Uh, yeah. All the facility repairs completed now, new doors, and I know we were working on that for the last couple of years. No, no, we still have, I mean, we do have new doors now, and we got our new scale. Um, I know that, uh, and you'll talk to GGB, they're working on a, a bid soon to, to go off and get us a new roof and gutters. Um, the, the main project I'm working on now is to replace the, the MSW tip floor, Bay 5 and 6, where you dump your trash, um, you know, to, to get that resurfaced. and, and it's, it's, in its 25, 30 years of existence has seen its fair share of wear and tear and, and it's getting to the point now where you're, you're starting to see the rebar and, and getting past that level of rebar and so we need to, we need to get that floor so repaired. So we did a capital request for that like 16, 17? That's, yeah, maybe three, four years ago we had, a, we started that, when, when we closed the, uh, the fund to, to finance the closure of the Ecology Park, the old landfill, um, we rolled that over into a transfer station improvement uh, line item, um, and then we started building up to that account, and, and it's at a point now where, where it's, we're satisfied with the amount of money that's in that account, so we're not requesting any new money. Now it's just a matter of do, so, so executing those projects. So we think those repairs to finalize should be done in <clears throat> 19, between the 2019 and 2020 should be complete? I hope to, I hope to have that tip floor done this year, yes. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. <clears throat> Other questions on the capital side or non-capital side, operating side? Questions from the RTM members, members of the public? Okay, you're all set. Thank you. Thanks. Next is municipal government buildings. Scott Denhart. Page 26. Good evening. Good evening. Scott Denhardt, acting lead tradesman for Travel Government Buildings. How are you tonight? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Okay, request of 991960 for the operating. Mm. Yep. Increase of $782. I'll go over that a little bit. There's yeah, the, uh, not a lot of changes, but. Uh, yeah, there's not a whole lot of changes. We had. Uh, that small increase in overtime, I think uh, we're going to didn't go very much on that because of the uh, light winter we're having, maybe next year, I don't know. But the uh, increase in salaries, we put uh, a small amount in there. We had a reduction for a retiree, Otto Berger, retired. Um, crew payroll, going to be an increase. Other than that, it's pretty well flat. We had a small uh, decrease in the purchase services because they uh, combined a elevator contract for Kone on the new building, the uh, community center, and the firehouse. So we had a reduction on that. But otherwise, it's pretty well, uh, pretty much the same. Okay. Thanks, uh, Scott. Uh, questions on the operating budget? Yeah. Bob. Scott, the uh, utilities, the water and gas, electric, yeah. what, what facilities does that cover? Uh, covers the uh, transfer, the uh, town hall, firehouse, police department, uh, counseling center, senior center, 
Um, the other miscellaneous buildings around town, pretty much everything we over oversee. Okay. Thank you. You're right, Bill. Yep. Other questions from the board on the operating? Questions from the RTM members? Frank, you can come up and use the mic. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Frank Tuhill, uh, First District, uh, RTM. Page 74, you have the uh, what people get paid there, and I just wanted to know, um, you have the amount of $600 listed as a salary differential. What's what's that for, that's, please? Um, that's a, a contractual thing that was negotiated at the last uh, contract where the tradesman uh, gets $1 per hour increase for coverage for the lead trader when he's out. Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you. You all set? Yep. Thank you. Other questions from the RTM members or members of the public? All right. Uh, Scott, that's good for the operating side. As far as the capital? Yes, sir. You're asking for 232500 Yep. <clears throat> um, you can see the a couple of new things on here. Um, the counseling center, we're having some issues over there with the foundation. During uh, periods of heavy rain, we're getting some water infiltration at the lower level, saturating some carpets. We, uh, we don't have an exact plan together. We, I spoke briefly with a local contractor, and uh, they suggested probably we might have to dig around the foundation, put some sort of a footing drain in, and seal the foundation. So, uh, but and he, you know, some rough numbers, you know, twenty-five to thirty thousand for just a small area. It's going to encompass some sidewalks, some landscaping. Um, so it's going to be, you know, kind of a it's not a huge job, but it's going to be it's going to have to be taken care of. Okay. The uh, generator for the counseling center that's been in there for a couple of years now. We're still requesting that, just due to, you know. The power outages are not not that they're you know frequent over there but when they when there is no power they pretty much have to shut down um i think it's a good idea to have a, some sort of backup power system for just about all our town buildings if, if possible we have some funded for the town hall um and a couple other buildings around town so i think that uh, it'd be wise to to get one going over there vehicle replacement uh, it's just stuff to get a uh, fund together to, to replace any vehicles. Currently, we have four vehicles. They're all in, in good working order. Um, the oldest, I think, is a uh, 2010. I could be wrong on that, but it's right around there. So we're going to ask him for that just to get a you know uh, fund together. The police department, moisture mitigation and uh, cell block upgrade. That's in there because. We have a severe or chronic moisture problem in the basement. It's it's a high humidity levels, and uh, we feel it's coming from the concrete itself. The vapor uh, emissions coming through. We're going to have to um, get some testing done on the relative humidity, where they actually bore holes in the concrete, put some probes in there, and leave them for over a period of time, and we'll get the results from. We we don't have anybody sign on for that just yet, but. Um, that's the first stage in that. There's also in the front of the building, in the locker area, there's a, uh, a larger leak where we end up having some puddling on the, on the floor and it's causing some uh, corrosion on equipment and so, so forth down there. The cell block upgrade, it, it's the current block uh, doors on the cells are a bar system and they're, they're really not up to safety standards. Um, for suicide prevention and that sort of thing. It's mainly a safety issue and, you know, for the uh, officers and the, the occupants. The police old garage, we started funding that, I believe, last year. Um, it's starting to deteriorate a little quicker, but I think, you know, over the next couple of years, we're definitely going to do that. We're going to do some patching on it where there's some leaks over the uh, old uh, police garage. And uh, well, the townwide building HVAC replacement, we're, we're doing pretty good with those. We got probably um, 
maybe about 11 or 12 units that are probably 18 years old, 18 to 20 years old. So they'll be coming due for replacement within the next few years. Um, and that's, that's really the gist of it right there. Okay. Scott, thanks. Questions? Bob? Uh, Scott, uh, service contracts, so I assume we have an aging uh, portfolio with these. Yeah. With these. So uh, what, what I'm seeing here, I see some large ones like 37,000, 13,000. Do, how do we... Uh, Are you back on, what do you, uh, excuse me, Bob, what are you, uh, you talking about service contracts? Yeah. Page 26-2. Yeah. So uh, what, what do we do when they come up? You know, uh, three Carl, well, I can't, yeah, everything that you see on there, I contacted most of them, and um, that you see, you know, you see one at twenty thousand. That, that that's the co a combination of all the buildings. It's not just uh, yeah. that's a couple different vendors. So it's the police department. It's you know every everyone that has it. It's combined there. The uh, what was it? There's another large one on here. You see thirty-seven thousand. That's also combined. That's the the fire department, the town hall. Police department, they're all under one. Uh, two different vendors, though. This one is supplied by one, which is almost about half of the, the, the contract you see there, and the other one are the other various buildings, which is the other half. Right. Okay, um, so, so but every it? year, yeah, I, I approached the, all the vendors this year and asked them what the increase would be, and these numbers reflect increases or decreases. Some of them were, were a little, went a little lower. Um, the, most of them are, are pretty much held the same, though. Right, and, and we're going. Are we going out to bid for any of these, or um, what's the process? only if they require it? Okay. You know, they're they're lo you know some of them are local. They're you know, and they're most of them we're happy with. There's a couple that are in question that we're going to be looking at, um, but for the most part, they're, they're they've been doing it for for so long. I mean, I know probably not a good practice, but you know, if so, they don't if they don't go over the bid threshold, they've been pretty much just. So yeah, we would look at them to make sure we're, we're keeping that in check. Yeah. My point. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. Thanks, uh, Bob. Hey, Scott, on page 26.6 uh, for police department, you know, I've, I've had a little experience with the water and basement levels. Yeah. Is 50 grand going to do uh, it? It's, it's not for, to fund the job, Charlie. It's for um, basically to get an assessment of it and try to get a scope of work laid out. Of, of what what what's going to need to be done okay it, it, the, the majority of it and it's on the flooring side is going to is going to encompass removal of all the flooring that's down there uh any sheet goods or or uh vct and have the the floor prepped and and sealed with an epoxy and then uh the flooring relayed over that and then you got the uh the cell block yeah work too and that that's um that's going to be quite a bit more money. And like I said, the fifty thousand is, is really just for design. The the cell block upgrade could be, you know, quite a bit of money. I mean, it's and, and they're talking, you know, perhaps not doing them all. There's there's fourteen cells in the in the uh, the, the cell area, and talking about probably upgrading the the front ones, which are the um, there's three uh, men's cells, two women's, and then one kind of a uh, I don't know what to call it, biohazard, but they're all in the front, and the, those are the ones that get used primarily. So I think it, those are the ones that we're looking at probably upgrading. Okay. Thank you. So this is for engineering services? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you estimate the project to be? Uh, between the flooring and the, and the cell block, it could be probably half a million dollars or more. So when do you plan on doing that? Uh, if we can get a plan together, then we're, we'll come back and see and see how that's going to go. So wouldn't that be reflected somewhere on the sheet? Um, it was recommended to me that we just try to get the designs uh, nailed out first and then go from there. Yeah, so uh, we're not just speak on it because Scott did bring this to my attention. Obviously, the, uh, the water issue, though, came up a few months ago before Otto had left. Mm -hmm. And when Scott then took over, he was started to explore to really have this problem my understanding that this was a long-standing problem mm. with the water. Then we heard from the police department that the uh, cell blocks were no longer, uh, and they can, they're here tonight, I'm sure they could speak to it, but really uh, uh, up to the standard of what's today's required. 
And so there are a number, I think there's up to 14 cell blocks. You may recall that they funded money last year to start the uh, replacement of the, the plumbing fixtures within those blocks. I think uh, Scott now is removing you know, the two that he was initially going to replace. Correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, you're moving that up the front. Yeah wanted to kind of put a hold on that project. He'll have two working ones. Then really wanted to bring somebody in to kind of give an overall assessment of first we need to address the water problem and then uh, with that the cell block problem. So to just throw a number out there, Joe, I, I, you know, I, I think at that point we, we said let's get some numbers first. Yeah, no, Because it's there's just such a long – and we need to hear from the police department whether they need four cells or – you know, 14, I, you know, th those are the types of discussions that still need to take place because that will obviously be a huge variable within the project itself. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Other questions on the capital items here? Questions from the public? Comments? All right. We're good. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Thanks. Next is engineering, page 14. John. Welcome. John Heffley, town engineer, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, good. So, we have a request of 364,372 decrease of 42.22. Uh, fairly self explanatory. Any comments you'd like to add? Uh, if you want me to go through any of these changes in the, the operating budget, just to. Uh, why don't you just go on to the uniform clothing and allowance? Sure. So, uniform clothing allowance is, is a new line item. Um, since I was, in the, I was previously the assistant town engineer for three years before Janice. Uh, left for Guilford. Uh, this was something that was never in the budget um, that I thought was appropriate to, to be in there as a line item. This would cover on any safety gear, safety vests, um, jackets, and then a boot allowance um, for the assistant town engineer. Um, we're responsible for marking out all the, the town's sewer infrastructure in, in town uh, as part of the Call Before You Dig program. So spray paint is, is used on a daily basis. I thought it appropriate for um, to, to request the, the funds for a boot allowance. Those are, is that part of a contract? It's not a contractual obligation, no. Thanks, John. Uh, questions on the board on the operating side here? Okay. Um, I do have one, though. Go ahead, sure. On 40.1, I have a, uh, a summer college intern, and then next year another. Uh, is that the same intern? Uh, this was put in the budget last year. Um, is that going to be the same intern? Or, or, same, or are they bring in a new same intern? Person you're saying? Oh, so we didn't actually hire anybody this last year. It was it a transition between uh, Janice and myself. Oh, and okay. We felt that the, the staff wasn't at the level where we could support an intern. Um, but that is something that we're requesting for this year to cover the, the same tasks that we had in mind last year. Okay. I have a question on 40.2. What is the community development assistant? So all these positions are, are currently, I don't say staffed in the department, but they... And I just wonder what, what do they do? So the community development assistant is, is almost like the office manager for, for engineering. Um, between the administrative assistant that's listed and the community development assistant, um, they're both admin assistants within the, the engineering department that cover engineering department, building department, and planning and zoning department is that, that front of office, um, kind of that first line that receives the public, answers the phone calls, um, and then the administrative duties for the... the Got a one more, John. Mm -hmm. On 40.2, under consulting services, what is MS4 permit compliance? Right, so, so MS4 is um, the municipal separate storm sewer system. Um, which is what we're considered. We have separate storm sewer, separate sanitary sewer systems. Uh, the DEP um, okay. has a mandate that we be a part of this program, and it's essentially to clean up the, the waters of the state. Um, as part of that program, we're required to, to meet certain, um, to do certain tasks and, and meet certain benchmarks. Okay. 
over over five years. Is that periods. new or is that? Is uh, we're, in, we're in year two right now of the current permit. Okay. So this will be a recurring item that you know is, is mandated by by the state DEP, the Department of Environmental and Energy Protection. So. In other words, you're going to see it every year. I assume so. We've, the the tests included are, are pretty extensive, more than I think the department can can handle. That's what they call an unfunded mandate, mm -hmm. essentially. Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> Just one question, Joe. Bob. Yeah, Charlie was going down the same line as I was. So, so the difference of the forty thousand or so, how is that used? Type of consultants. A consulting services. Yeah. Uh, we, we put out a request for proposals um, for engineering consulting services for this MS4 permit year. Um, again, each year we have different tasks and different benchmarks we need to meet. Uh, that that 30000 that we that we contracted for this past year um, covers that year's permit tasks. And so the balance of that we use for whatever else we're doing in town that we need outside. Consulting. For consulting services, right. That, that would be um, hiring any consultants to, to do any engineering or, or design services for us. And do we, do we, do we, how much of that do we do? Uh, year to year, we quite a bit. I mean, there, there's different, um, different consultants that we, that we hire to help us out with any kind of permitting we need for that goes through DEP for their approval, Army Corps approvals, okay. um, essentially anything that, that we can't handle in-house. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I got one more, Charlie. I've got a page 40.3 and 40.5. Talk about the cattle crossing. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why they just don't block that off? I believe the public opinion on that was unfavorable. I mean, um, it, it would take them another five minutes to go around the corner. I understand that. I, I think that the decision was made to to use something that's more removable to keep that open. I saw the floodgates. Yeah. Right. You get three hundred thousand. Right through through the public process. That was that was the option that was chosen. Okay. That's preferred, I should say. Okay. Uh, other questions on the operating before we go to the capital? Frank, you got a question? Chairman. On page 81, the pay is broken up, and there's uh, four employees I see in the engineering department. Two of the rates of pay are going down. What's the reason for that? There's the, the right there's there's the pay of the assistant engineer going down by almost four thousand dollars for the year, and the other one is the um, uh, uh, there's a reduction of a thousand eight sixty one to the um, uh, CDAP worker. How come? Right. So the, the way that the, the union contracts are structured for new hires, um, the assistant engineer is currently making 85% of, of the salary okay. um, until, I, I believe, October 1st of this year. Um, and the community, I'm sorry, the land use coordinator, which is, I think, listed as the, as the administrative assistant, um, that new hire will come in at 80%. Uh, okay. So. It um, it's a it's step a percentage, right? Okay. Right. So that's why those those are going down. Okay. Thanks so much. Sure. Thank you. Thanks, thanks Frank. Yep. Other questions on the operating budget? Now we'll move to the capital. John, you've got uh, two capital items requested for 19 and 20. The Howard Avenue and the Meadow Street. All right. So the the Howard Avenue revetment is one that was um, in our coastal resiliency plan. Um, and it's been on the engineering department's radar for a bit here. Um, a, a slope off of Howard Avenue is, is eroded during the storms. Uh, we currently have a sewer main, a, a sanitary sewer main within that slope. Um, this product is, is one we'd like to undertake sooner than later to protect that sanitary sewer. And that would be funded out of the Coastal Resiliency Fund? <laughs> I saw you shake your head, so that's right. Yeah. Just in time, Joe. Uh, the plan is not to, uh, but 
down the road, these might be things that would be worthy candidates. Uh, our goal is to try to uh, build the fund up, start building that up. Yeah, you seem to like to build up these funds. I guess. I mean, it's a, it seems to do well with uh, outside with, investors. With the bonding and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we got you. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Um, and the Meadow Street reconstruction. This is the, again design and permitting phase. Right. So the the Meadow Street reconstruction. Um, this would be from. Church Street to Rogers Street at this point, that's going to be the, the Church Street's going to be the terminus because we, we have potential development on that um, Atlantic Wire property. Uh, this is money that we had, well, we're requesting for 1920 for engineering for phase one. Um, phase two is currently funded um, through lot SIP funding through the COG. Um, currently at a value of a million dollars. We're hoping to revise that project both the scope of the project and perhaps the range of the project. Uh, we're requesting additional funding as, as the years go out um, for, for construction through lots that you know, this, you know, the, the town is responsible for the engineering aspect of these lots of projects. Okay. And then you've got an estimate of $1.8 million for the actual work to be done in future years? Right. So that would be um, the reconstruction of Mount Street. Th this project is, is meant to try to get rid of a lot of that nuisance flooding that we see you know, during heavy rainfall and high tides. Um, and I'm sure you guys have all seen the, the amount of water that accumulates on Meadow Street due to the lack of drainage down there. So um, as part of this project, that, that's something that we're trying to take care of. Um, as we expand this project, if we're able to through the COG and lots of funding, um, we'll, we'll try to expand the capacity of underground detention to try to take care of those less frequent storms that, that can cause a lot of damage. Now, how does that development on the corner of uh, Monoese and Meadow Street, future development, did they, did they have any uh, contribution to this project? Not to this project, since we are stopping at Church Street. Um, they did have, the last plans I saw were, you know, were to, to reconstruct Church Street, um, you know, change the direction of some of those streets, create a new access road that comes around the Pine Orchard Road. So. So they're off the hook? No, that would be part of their project. That's why we're only, we're only going to Church Street. We're stopping at Church Street. Okay. Um, and we talked about the cattle crossing. So, Where, where is the cattle crossing? That's the, um, you know, the Europe, 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 Europe Park there. The, uh, yeah, the Europe Park. <laughs> the oh, oh, I see. Yeah. The, little, under, the underpass. The underpass, yeah. that's it. Anything else you'd like to add? You've got a Main Street reconstruction. That's a big one. Right. So Main Street reconstruction is, again, we're trying to request additional funding through lots of program uh, with the COG. We recognize the need for a reconstruction on, on Main Street there, um, crosswalks, some sidewalk repairs, making the, the um, ramps ADA compliant. A lot of them aren't. Um, and then in addition to that, we we know that there's old trolley lines down there that really prohibit you from just milling and paving Main Street. Um, they're so shallow that that's where we're seeing a lot of potholes, especially right across the green. You'll see potholes <coughs> pop up every every winter to those trolley tracks. Okay, Charlie. Hey, John, on that uh, you know, same thing, the Main Street, mm -hmm. it shows the line item as being $2 million from the state. Now, <coughs> is the town going to kick in? So under the lots of program, the town is responsible for funding the like, phase one engineering part of the project. Yeah. Um, and then at this point, we're, we're anticipating a $2 million um, allocation from the state during, you know, through the lot set program. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Other questions on the capital? Questions from the RTM members, the general public? I think we're good. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is fire. <coughs> Thirty three and thirty four. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? How are we? All? Good. How are you doing? Okay. Sir, would you like to start with just the uh, 
the changes this year? Yeah, Chief, that's fine. Um, I'm sure you're all aware that the changes in our budget are primarily related to the SAFER grant. Um, all the changes under the personnel services part of the budget, um, with the exception of a few contractual step increases for the firefighters, are um, uh, reflected in the SAFER grant. So it's important to note that on um, within our operating budget, we list 100% of the costs of the additional firefighters. We know that on the revenue side um, is where the money will come in for the grant at 75% of the re replacement costs. Um, and the percent increases shown are reflected of the amended budget um, from last year. Remember, we're, we started this project in this current fiscal year, halfway through the year, and so um, we're, we're making those percent changes based on that amended budget. Um, so um, salary, the salary increase is um, 278,863. The um, board clerk and the part-time are reflective of the uh, approved uh, increases for part-time employees or the suggested increase for part-time employees. Um, the remaining three lines, vacation, holiday, and um, personnel and sick are safer increases. Longevity was a decrease through retirements. Um, accrued payroll expense, the 25,015 is through um, the uh, difference between the old fiscal year and the new fiscal year, and Catherine and I calculated that together. Um, and then stipends is the, uh, again, a safer increase um, with some additional people becoming paramedics, right? So, um, under the uh, non-personnel side, uniform clothing allowance, we decreased by 5,500. We initially had that increase when we started the part-time program. We don't need that much money, so we're going to uh, reduce that this year. However, it's almost a wash in the employment testing side, which is all, where all, we have all the physicals. Um, we do have the increased personnel, and um, we also lost another vendor in the occupational medicine world. So it's getting really tight to find. We're either back to Yale or Middlesex. We have meeting with those two hospitals tomorrow, um, and it's going to come down to economics to determine who can provide the best uh, price for us. Um, uh, the only other increase was a small increase in the volunteer equipment, um, and that's the, the operating, side. operating side of the budget. Okay, let's stop there for a second, Chief. Um, request of $6,359,765, which as you pr presented, uh, increase of 377692 6.3% increase, reflecting the uh, primarily the safer grant. Uh, questions from the board on, uh, on the operating budget? <coughs> Aren't guys all set for more? Questions from RTM members, members of the public, on the operating budget for the fire department? Okay, why don't we move to the capital, Chief? Yep. Um, sorry. I heard you mention earlier about how we like sinking funds, but we have a few of those in the fire department. Um, the fire apparatus sinking fund on page, uh, the uh, total capital is on 3411, and then on 3412 is the vehicle replacement fund. This fund actually is projected to go out much further than you can see on this piece of paper, but um, essentially the top line is the, previous, the uh, opening reserve balance. So it's a sinking fund, so we have an opening reserve. The second number would be any additional budgetary appropriation. The, um, that would give us the total fund, funding sources, which is about the fifth line down. And then at the bottom or, um, is the closing balance, and the negative would be any purchases made. So we don't have any purchases in, uh, planned in apparatus for 1920, but to get to the 2021 number, which is to replace uh, Stony Creek Engine 5. By the time we replace that engine, it's going to be 28 years old, um, which is three years past um, the recommended life for an active 
piece of fire apparatus. Um, the numbers are, are, you know, this is these are items we go out to bid. We we take the average cost that we can find of of this similar type engine, and we project an increase. So again, we're projecting that to be a little over half a million dollar purchase at that point. Okay. Questions on the uh, vehicle replacement? Chief, I have a question. Does that truck go to Stony Creek or does it go to engine one and then rotate it out? So th this year it's going to go, that. it'll go to Stony Creek because of the age of that engine and, and there's really no value. We're, we'll probably work some type of trade in for engine five. Right. In the past, um, we've moved engine one, um, engine one to engine seven, which is our spare. So engine seven is um, 17 years old, going to be 18 years old. It's um, it's got 107 mi thousand miles on it, and so we moved that, and it's a very reliable spare, which we need for our I our ISO rating and for when we have downtime. Our next possible um, move to replace a volunteer engine with a an older engine one. Um, engine 9 was is currently 18 years old. By the time that would happen, it would be over several years, 20 years old. And we had purchased engine 9 um, back when we purchased the group of apparatus in between 98 and um, 2001. We purchased four pieces of major apparatus. Engine 9 was kind of a, a low bid purchase. So it's yeah, it's the one that gives us the most problems. Yeah, that's your Mongol truck right now. Yeah. And and mm -hmm. engine remember engine two and engine four we had done some refurbs on to keep to to kind of push out their life span so they won't be replaced. So that's why they're not cycled in right now. They're not cycled out until further out into the uh, into the plan, yeah. Thank you. We Thanks. thought about fives, though. We did uh, good that you bought yeah, that. Yeah, that was actually thought of at the board meeting. About putting ones down there, but there's a lot of safety issues on that truck that we have to comply with. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, thanks. Thanks, guys, on that. Other questions on the vehicles? Go to the next one. <clears throat> the next um, is the ambulance replacement plan. Um, we had hoped to do the remount again this year. We had it... Um, Everything lined up, and I got a letter from the manufacturer saying that our, the dealer that was going to do the work, who had proposed to do the work, was no longer a dealer for Lifeline. Um, looking into it a little bit more, they were going to do this remount on their own and warranty it on their own. This is a dealership who has been really great for us. We've never had a problem with them, but they were on some shaky financial ground, and I didn't feel that to enter into a contract with them for over $170,000 was going to be, um, you know, if they were to go belly up, we would have been left holding the bag. So um, we decided to just push that off, um, replace uh, a different ambulance, which is actually the oldest ambulance um, this year completely. And um, so the increase in that account is to fund that and then future leaving a balance for future purchases and down the road. Any questions on the ambulance? So that's going to be a complete unit? This this year's purchase would be a complete unit. So the panel gets traded in? The 2005 will get traded in. Yeah. Or the 10. I'm sorry, yes, the 10. The 10. Yeah. Okay, I'll get traded out. Okay, radio, upgrades. Um, the radio upgrades, um, we um, we ended up, it, it is a sinking fund, it covers everything from portables to mobile radios to the, um, to the major infrastructure portion, and um, what we ended up doing this year, because we finally had a product to purchase, is volunteer pagers were, were causing some issues. They... The original pagers were no longer being supported. They couldn't hear the digital side of the frequency, so that created a safety issue where they'd get dispatched on the analog. They'd be responding. We we're supposed to simulcast the two, but human error, they, it, it doesn't happen frequently, or they miss the call and they're still responding. And they really need to be able to hear updates from incident command between the time they're transitioning from home to their personal vehicle to the apparatus, because. You know, to have an apparatus responding to a call they're no longer needed is, is a safety issue. Um, and if they miss directions. So the uh, the product 
finally came out where we could make a purchase. So we, per we spent $26,000 out of that funds to buy 40 volunteer pagers to replace pagers that are well over, some of them are, are already 20 years old. So they're failing. We've had no products to replace them. There's a lot of volunteers that don't even have them anymore. So that, um, we made that purchase, which set us back a little bit. We're still um, on track to do the major new um, radio site, which would include police fire, um, and Public Works, which Public Works is our backup frequency for both the public safety frequencies. Out at exit 56, the um, radio vendor indicated that the state police were going to build a site at the state garage out there. We should hold off and wait for that project to happen. We did wait. We met with the state. We met with the vendor. They gave us permission to put our stuff on, on their tower, gave us space in the building so we won't have to um, do anything. We, originally we had planned to do something at the transfer station. Either we would have to purchase a building outside the building and put it on the roof of the transfer station or do something in their facility which takes away ground from them. So it was kind of a win-win for us. It gives us better coverage overall, higher um, elevation and um, we're, we're just asking to continue to fund those um, those projects in the, in the sinking fund. What's next? Uh, cardiac Cal monitors. monitors. Yes. You have a question, I'm sorry, Joe? Tom. Hey, Tom, on the, on the um, <clears throat> in 2020, I know you're going to add the re oh, well, what the transmitter and the receivers. So we we did um, the first phase of that project. Remember, were the existing sites. We replaced What's the all cost of that. for that, though. Do I see that here? Um, that was two. It was. 280. Yeah, 289. 279. And where do I No, see actually, that, that project was $211,000 plus the 26 for the um, the um, other radios and the purchases. 237. No, but in 2020. Yep, that'll be. I think I made Where do I see a number tower. for that? Yeah. The, the new tower is in 2020, yes. And that's 280,000. That's 280,000. Oh, that's, that's, yes. I'm sorry, I thought you were referring that, to the work we already did. Yeah, that's the Lee Talon Road Tower. Okay. It's a state garage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's state garage. That's so that. in 18 and 19, you can see where the other purchases okay. were made and in that's the project. The police, fire, and public works radios. All and those projects are bid? Yeah. A state contract. It's a state contract price. It's it's <coughs> Motorola. It's a Motorola right, project. Right, right. There's gotcha. really no... Okay. Um, and I had spoken to you briefly uh, earlier about this uh, fund, uh, Mr. Chairman. It's the self-contained breathing apparatus sinking fund. It doesn't exist. In the past, uh, several years ago, we had made capital purchases over a three-year period. And knowing that um, the, air, the air bottles themselves that are part of the assembly are finite after 15 years, you can no longer hydro test them, you have to throw them away after 15 years. So that's about a third of the cost of a new air pack anyways. By the time we get into the 15 year, they're recommended by the National Fire Protection Association that promulgates the standards to, to um, you know, retire them and technology changes by then. There's, so what we did is we projected out to 2025 the replacement of all our SCBAs and the chart just kind of says, well, if we do it, if you were looking at year 2019 for 56 units, this is the price of the unit. And, um, you know, with a 5% escalation e each year, um, it would get us to 2025. They would, we're projecting them to cost 590000 almost 591000 And um, it would take about $85,000 a year in a sinking fund to get us there. So I just wanted, you know, the conversation uh, I had with the chairman was, would you like to see it in a, in a sinking fund? Or, you know, it was just my suggestion to show you the liability that would be out down the road because I think it helps the board plan better when they know what's, you know, even though it's 2025, it's not that far away in the grand scheme yeah. of things. So I, I put it in there um, and how the board decides to fund it um, or agrees to fund it in the future is... Thank you. 
questions on this this request? Uh, we talked about the car we, we did talk about the cardiac monitor. Uh, did not. We did okay, not so that, that it's, uh, the cardiac monitor um, <clears throat> that covers the the it's almost an annual purchase of a life pack 15. By the time we make the purchases of the existing life packs, we trade in one and we get the the latest technology and, and, it, and it does include not only the unit but all the associated hardware um, pads all the stuff that we we buy for them the cardiac monitors are um, this you know state-of-the-art they um, basically are the one things we use to let you know whether you're having a, um, a heart attack or not activate the cath lab and, and get you care plus a, they give us a whole lot of other information about the patient so with the um, with the amount of cars we have on the road and, the, and all the things we're doing, it's, al it's almost, uh, we, we skip when we buy all the replacement AEDs, which also come out of this account. Um, so the 35,000 buys what? One. One, one. one. one plus the, all, a lot of the associates. For instance, one of the rainbow cables is about $1,700. So, you know, those, those are the cables that go from the patient to the, to the monitor and in you know, just the regular right. cost gotcha. of doing business, they get beat up. So we'll have to make a few purchases. Thanks. Thanks, Chief. Mm -hmm. Questions on this and this or other capital items? Jim, you want to comment? Yeah, uh, just just uh, back to the operating budget. I think it's important to uh, underscore on page seven when you see the revenues that the safer grant we're budgeting 660,000 in revenue. That's it. 660. <laughs> well, it's a new revenue item. It yes. wasn't in, in other years. And that's, that's strictly from the safer? Yeah. So, that's so that helps offset. Is that, is that, what percentage is that? I believe it's 75. 75%? This year, yeah. yeah. 75. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Yep. We'll take that. Uh, thank you on that. Uh, questions uh, on capital budgets? Questions from the general public, RTM members? Okay, I think you're good to go. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Thank you. Next is police service, page 30 and 31. Six point five million dollars, increase of one hundred forty-three thousand nine hundred six in the operating. Chief, you're going to present. Yes. So the, uh, <clears throat> the first change is the, uh, the captain's position. We filled that that vacant position. Um, the next change is uh, patrol officers. Uh, slight step increases there. Uh, dispatchers went down about seven thousand uh, dollars due to new employees. Crossing guards, we had a ten point eight nine percent increase, uh, seven thousand six forty four. Uh, that reflects a new uh, crossing guard at Walsh Intermediate School uh, due to the traffic patterns. Um, over time, uh, we have an increase of about thirty one. Uh, 1,984, and that's uh, regard to uh, training that we have to do, uh, active shooter training, uh, special events, ninth, uh, sorry, 13,500. Uh, that's due to the uh, Columbus Day Parade, and a decrease in longevity is the uh, significant changes. Uh, a reduction of 40,340 in accumulated sick payout. We don't have any anticipated uh, retirements. Um, accrued payroll uh, increase of 26,633, and that's based on a uh, full contingent uh, for the extra days. So that's the uh, personnel side of the, the budget. Um, 
to keep keep document that. <clears throat> so uh, education expense, a $2,800 increase, about 10%. Uh, that's based on contractual. We did an analysis of the uh, our fuel consumption. Uh, we were able to reduce that almost $8,000 uh, based on the uh, mileage with the uh, Ford Explorers. Purchase services, we reduced by $12,445. That's mostly attributed to, uh, we're discontinuing the uh, DNA project, the Bodhi project. Um, the state is, appears to be uh, increasing their uh, DNA analysis. Uh, we just received uh, some notification that they plan on putting some uh, rapid DNA systems into police departments in Connecticut. Um, so I think it's on, what is it? 3110. So if you look about halfway down, um, there's a, uh, a request for $2,500 for the <coughs> iRecord um, uh, system. That is a state mandated system. Uh, for recording certain uh, interviews uh, dependent upon uh, the level of the crime. That might go away because you'll see when we get to the Capitol, we're requesting a new system. The, the system that we have is approximately five years old, six years old. It's no longer serviceable. Uh, so just keep that in mind when we get to that point. Um, radio communications, uh, if you turn to page 3111. So the significant increases that you'll see with this is uh, uh, the Motorola service uh, had quite significant increase. Uh, that went up to $63,000. Uh, and the uh, yearly software and firmware update uh, was also increased. When we put in the original radio system, uh, we, we had said that we would stay with the latest and greatest uh, updates on that radio system. Uh, these are the required updates by Motorola. Um, we, we had learned that other departments didn't stay up, up to date with, with the updates and they're getting like $400,000 bills. Um, so by, by maintaining this, uh, um, this is like a five year update, one of the bigger updates, so I anticipate that to go down. Uh, next year. A little further down, you'll see the uh, mobile MDT cellular network. Uh, we reduce that to zero. The reason why we reduce that to zero is because we combined our cell phones and our cellular MDTs. We moved to a uh, AT&T first net. It's a uh, priority cellular uh, service for uh, first responders. <coughs> Uh, we saw a significant uh, savings, um, and, and I did notice a, an error in this. The multiplier is, is wrong on this. The multiplier the, uh, per month should be 3,000. So last year, um, again, the, the, the mobile data terminals uh, was 16,200. The cell phone data was, uh, the bottom one was uh, 30,000. Uh, so we combine the two for, for $36,000. Um, Where is that, Chief? Page 3111. Yep. Yeah. So if you look at, if you look at the, the line item radio communication systems, I, so that the bottom half of that, it says communication expense yep. sh slash scan. Yes. So if you look at that last item, we zeroed that out. Right. I saw so, that. right. So last year that was sixteen thousand two hundred. Okay. But if you go to the next line item under communications uh, telephone cable, that's where we combine the two uh, for thirty six thousand dollars. Gotcha. Okay, I got you. The cell phone AT and T. That's that's the thirty six thousand. Okay. Correct. And that's part of the seventy four thousand. Correct. All right, I think I yep, follow you now. Okay. Uh, so the next, uh, the next item is an increase uh, um, of $6,000 in furniture and uh, fixtures. Uh, 
Um, we typically haven't uh, budgeted anything in there uh, for the last couple of years. Um, some of the furniture in there is just falling apart. The, the secretary's desk, they can't even open up the drawers. They're just falling apart. Uh, we still have uh, donated furniture from Eklund and they closed, and those things are falling apart. Uh, so we'd like to add that in. And those are the uh, pretty much the significant changes uh, in the operating budget. Okay, questions in the operating budget? From the board. <clears throat> Questions from RTM members or members of the public? So, um, with none, we'll move on to the capital. Okay, so <clears throat> again, this year we're requesting five cars. The board has uh, made some changes with the, the police interceptor. Um, some of it has to do with the, uh, uh, the frame that it's on, as well as the, uh, the engines that are uh, involved. Um, so we don't have an exact number on the price of the cars. Um, $3,400 was a roundabout, and I know if, if you do the math, 34 times five is not 172. We kind of gave it a little bit of a buffer uh, to, to make sure that we, we had something to uh, cover the cost of the cars. Um, the next line is uh, equipping the cars. Um, and that includes the, uh, the mobile cameras uh, in the cars for 102,750. Um, portable replacement. Portable radio replacements. Uh, we could get three, uh, three portables for for that uh, cost nine thousand one hundred thirty-two dollars. The portable radios, again, they got to be moving on to six and seven years old now, and, and we think by replacing three or so a year, uh, we'll stay on top of it because we're starting to see some failures. Um, the radar speed units <coughs> that will. Uh, uh, $12,000. Uh, we're also requesting a license plate reader for, for $14,025. And the interview room, uh, I record. That's what I talked about a little bit uh, earlier with the purchase services. Um, again, we're required by uh, state law to record uh, certain felony interviews. Um, the cost to replace that system is uh, $16,435 which is no longer being supported. Chief, what's the, uh, what's the amount of, uh, that's in your fund, that uh, I don't special the fund? Federal Asset Forfeiture Fund. Pardon? The yeah. Federal Asset Forfeiture Fund, it's approximately $180,000. How much? Approximately $180,000. And what have you used that for this fiscal year so far? So we purchased a new canine for approximately $8,000. Um, we just, uh, we were able to replace the ventilation system, uh, the control for the ventilation system in our firearms range for 25, 26,000. And the um, you know weapons, no, <coughs> no, I'm trying uh, to think. The, the, oh, the virtual, virtual. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, so we're participating in a, uh, um, a training sim simulator, I guess it would be. It's, a, it's, a, it's called Vertra. It's a, you, you can speak better than this, it's a 280 degree. Yeah, it's an, it's an immersive uh, training, um, 320 or 280 degree uh, screen and room. It's run by uh, very, very fast uh, computers. And what it does is it tests the officer's uh, use of force, de decision-making abilities under uh, a lot of stress. Um, we were able to join with uh, the city of Milford. They host it. Um, many other departments belong to it. There's a $10,000 entry fee, and there's some minor maintenance from it. Uh, being part of that program years past, we've seen tremendous success in the training of the officers you can't expect them to perform in those high stress environments without some exposure to those environments and you really can't 
recreate those without simulations, whether it's a simunition environment and or this uh, training simulator. So very good results. We did bring some of the commissioners down with us. They did see it. One in particular went through it. Uh, it will get your heart rate up. It will start the adrenaline, which then uh, affects their decision making. So we want to expose them to those environments. So that's where that comes from. Um, and it's a uh, it, it's about a five hundred to six hundred dollar thousand hundred five or six hundred thousand dollar system. Uh, so it's very complex, but it, the, the benefits far outweigh what it's going to cost us. <clears throat> Thank you, John. Just just to add to that, with the uh, federal asset forfeiture, um, there, there's just been some recent recent case law that uh, it looks like a, I don't know if you remember a while ago there was a uh, there was a moratorium on it. Um, it, it looks like uh, it might be going by the, the wayside also. Um, right. So I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to participate in that. Gotcha. Thanks, Chief. <coughs> Questions on the Capitol? Charlie? Hey, Chief, how many laser uh, radar speed units is that for? How many? That'll uh, be four. Four units? Yeah. Thank you. In the plate, uh, and on the plate reader, Chief. I'm sorry. Oh, How many plate readers? One. Thank you. Well, Chief. Do you have a question? Or uh, Harry? Uh, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Harry. How many patrol cars per shift are out on the road? Well, it varies. Um, well, weekdays. Then you have holidays, weekends. We, we could we could have up to, to six six patrol cars with three supervisors. Well, he he's got to raise ahead of me. Right. 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 Some 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 shifts could have up to 13, 13 vehicles on the road. Between supervisors and uh, patrolmen. Yep. So, what are we putting about 100,000 miles a year on these vehicles? More than that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. Um, you know, in this, it, it, when we talk about cars, remember, you, you're not including uh, detective cars. Um, so, what we do is, is we, <coughs> we cycle the older cars to do a couple things. Uh, one, <coughs> they're kind of money makers um, for the town. I forget the exact number last year, but. It was probably close to between the administrative fees and we charged $25 an hour um, that goes back into the general fund. I think it was close to $300,000 that it generated. Am I close to that? That's what a special so. detail? I, I, I would have, yeah, I'd yeah. have to refer to yeah. Jim because he, yeah. we don't yeah, see the numbers, to, we just kind of built. I want to say close to 400. Yeah, it's showing 396,000 for okay. 1718. So, yeah. Okay, so, so it's about 400. So I lowballed it for you. Right. Um, but uh, so anyways, so, so we have those cars that are being used for uh, road job cars. Um, we have the detectives, uh, depending upon when it is, maybe three or four detectives on, uh, but some of the detectives cycle through. Um, and we have, uh, you know, special purpose uh, units out there, such as our traffic units. Uh, so, and, and that doesn't include vehicles that we need to send officers to training. Um, and sometimes vehicles are out for maintenance and, and those types of things. So. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, other questions from the board? No. Uh, Bob, sure. Uh, where are we with body cameras? Are we doing replacements soon or body cameras? So, so we're pretty good with body cameras right now. Um, so when we buy an in-car video camera system, uh, we get one free uh, body camera with it. So every officer is equipped with their own body camera. So what we're using, we're using that one as kind of a replacement or, or a backup uh, body camera to try to cycle them out. Thank you. Okay, other questions? Questions from RTM members or members of the public with regards to the operating or the capital request for the police department? If not, thank you. Chief? Did you want oh, special I'm details? So, I'm sorry, yeah, special detail. Go ahead. Yep. Special details <coughs> remain in the same at uh, 525000 And that's the, uh, as you know, the right. that pass through accounts. So. Gotcha. Questions on special detail? Anybody? Going once. All right, thank you, okay. gentlemen. Thank you. Next is probate court. Page 20. Welcome, Judge. Thank you for your patience. Good evening, all. Thank you. 
request of twelve thousand eight hundred fifty dollars, increase of th three of three hundred bucks. That's that's it. Essentially, the internet has to be upgraded to go to a higher speed in order to accommodate um, the the data in the event that the existing internet goes down. I don't really understand it, but this is what I'm being told by the state. And this is the state. So this is part of um, probate administration. Oh, yes. I see. So this is not local IT, it's state IT. Right, and they're requiring us to upgrade it. Okay. Um, and other questions from the, from the judge on the probate court budget? Charlie? Say hello, Frank. I haven't seen you. Charlie, how are okay. you? That's it? That's it. <laughs> um, Questions from the other questions from the board? Questions from RTM members or members of the public? I think you're all set. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Next up is elections, page 21. Request of 994,316, increase of 28,724. Dan, how are you? Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good evening. I hope it doesn't go to morning. Yes, yes. Um, basically, what we got here is just the, the three things that are of uh, interest is the um, presidential primary ha is accounted for. That will be in the, they haven't announced the date yet, but that will be sometime in the uh, winter of 2020. So we have to uh, account for that primary. We have not accounted for uh, the eventuality of a primary uh, for uh, the other federal offices, which may or may not occur. Um, so we we take the approach that, that um, we have in the past that it is not a uh, primary that we ask for money for, but the presidential primary, almost certain that that will take place. Um, and then the other thing is the other line item that you'll notice would be the other supplies and um, per request from um, uh, Jamie Cosgrove to, to uh, First Selectman ask that we uh, put into our budget the eventuality of moving back uh, the first district to the community house and um, the seventh district to um, Walter Intermediate School. Now, as you know, construction is taking place on both of those locations, so that may or may not happen. Um, we have certain deadlines we have to meet in order to make that, um, to, in order to make those deadlines, you know, we have to depend upon whether the uh, construction is done or not. But uh, we put it in there in that eventuality. And then also on that line is um, we have the cost for uh, 10, um, backup batteries for our election equipment. The ones we have now are 10 years old and we routinely have them maintained by um, the batteries plus out of orange, but it gets to the point now where um, we're, we're having two or three of them go uh, down every election and it's just, it's just a need to, to uh, put new ones in. So That's an other we're going to do that on a two year basis with we'll the half of them this year and half of them next year. And that's other, in other supplies? That's under other supplies, yeah. Okay. And as far as the meals? Uh, that's, a, that's a line item that was added this year. Um, we, the, uh, very typically, a, uh, our staff during election day um, are uh, there for 15 hours and uh, they can't leave the um, the polling place. So um, in the past, a lot of times they've been able to bring food in and whatnot, but now the different locations that we're doing it, they don't have facilities like for here. There's really no facilities to warm up food and cook food and things of that sort. Um, so uh, we have um, arranged for them to get uh, sandwiches um, in the morning and sandwiches in uh, late afternoon. Okay. So, uh, Questions on the elections budget request? Questions from RTM members or members of the public? 
Okay, Dan, I think you're all set. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Next is Human Resources and Labor Relations, page 29. Welcome, Margaret. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. How are you? I'm terrific. Good, good. So, um, you have a budget request of 327817 Increase of thirty-eight thousand five dollars. Um, I was asked to highlight a few of the sure go right ahead changes that I'm suggesting. Um, recognizing that I've only been in the job since January seventh, I hope you'll bear with me. Uh, the first thing I did was ask my colleagues, um, what do they need HR to do differently? Or what would they like HR to do differently? And two themes came to. One was increasing the way we recruit our talent, and the second was to change the way we administer our time and attendance, which is a very paper, manual process. So increasing our talent, it's easy to do by taking a look at the way you do that and how we do it and the way we need to do it. Um, I'm suggesting that we need to increase our internet recruiting tools. It's only a... Um, I think I'm recommending a, a, small, a slight increase on that. It looks large by percentage, but it's very small on the advertising side. The second thing I'm suggesting that we do, which I think is a little bit more detrimental, is to increase the way or change the way we do our time and attendance program. Currently, it's except in, with the police and with the fire, it's all manual. It's literally paper and pen. We need to go to an automated system. And I would like to suggest that we look at uh, an automated time and attendance system that will connect to our payroll. And that's where you see the ADP increase cost there of, of, of 37000 So that's for um, increase in payroll uh, costs on a pay each payroll, or is it uh, cost of the automation? Or it's, the software it's, or correct it's but it's cost of the automation and then it's uh, implementation of the product as well as it's cost of the use of the autom autom automated product on a per person basis um, but I think what we will get is a <laughs> more compliance I mean it's very difficult to imagine in this day and age anyone taking a time and attendance manually literally recording vacation sick time hours worked overtime worked uh, extra hours work during the day in a literally a paper and pencil way. It's a much easier way if we can automate it and do it on our, on our phone or by our PC. And I think our compliance rates will be higher. So you'd be installing clocks, is that what this is? No, it, it literally, um, basically it's just, a, it's a system that um, you would use your phone to record your hours. Your supervisor would, re would approve those hours, those hours and would then be automatically sent to payroll HR, HR would audit and approve it, and then it would automatically be sent to ADP. Um, so I think you, you you take away the you know handing of paper from one and recording of hours worked on a sheet of paper and a supervisor no, yeah, signing off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other uh, highlights you'd like to point out? I think that's about that's, it right now. That's good. Questions, Victor. Question. Um, the conversion to this more automated ADP system, is some of this going to continue annually and, and one part just implementation? Yes. Are it, they separated? Um, yes. The implementation costs are separate than the um, per person costs or per per usage costs. So there's 37397 Is that one component or the other or is that combined? Combined. So how much is the annual going forward after the implementation? Um, I would suggest it be about 50% of that. 50%. At this point, I just don't know because I haven't decided on exact um, time and attendance program I'm going to go to okay. or I'd like to go to. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Charlie. Margaret, I use um, uh, ADP, too. You know, they have a lot of programs. They do. And there's a lot of roadblocks, too. But is the process planned so the person, the individual, reports their own time to yes. ADP directly? No, no, not directly. Uh, the, the individual, the employee, rec 
records their time on their head handheld device or their PC. And then, and then does a supervisor check their time? Absolutely. And so the supervisor then checks the time before it goes on to ADP? Before it goes on to HR. Oh, it goes to you then? That's correct. All right, and you forward it on to ADP? That's correct. We are. Okay, so you have a dedicated person at uh, uh, ADP who works with you? We are not a large enough account to have an account manager at ADP. Really? We have um, in a customer service center that we use to get help from ADP. They change them? Yeah. You know. So you're meeting new customer service reps all the time? Yes. Okay. I mean, there's possible pitfalls. Uh, this is the, I had ADP at my last employer for 14 okay. years and know its strengths and weaknesses. And I really don't think there's any product out there that's 100%, including expensive ones like Workday or SAP. Okay. They all have their disadvantages too. Thank you. So, uh, thanks, thanks, Margaret. Uh, questions, other questions on the, the uh, HR, human HR budget? Questions from the RTM members or members of the public? Okay, Jamie, are, any comments on this budget? Uh, no, I just think, um, you know, Margaret's been doing a uh, great job in just really evaluating the department and how their processes and is making some tremendous recommendations to improve okay. uh, the HR services. Not only uh, for the, all personnel. Yeah. It's really good. there to be a resource. Thank you. Okay, Margaret, thanks a lot. Welcome aboard and good luck. Thank you. And labor relations, we've kept the same for next year. We've okay. made no changes in Okay, cost. that is, uh, where is that on this one? Oh, there it is. I got you. Labor relations is what budget, what what page number is that? It's 19. Point, uh, 19. 19? Thanks. <clears throat> And that request is 62500 and that pays for the uh, labor attorney? Correct. And um, what contracts are up this year? Yes, um, we have um, on page 19.1, we have the firefighters, park and rec, public works, highway, town hall union. And we're currently working on the um, Brand, uh, Brantford police and dispatchers. So they're all up. Basically, just about, and they're all they all expire June thirtieth. Well, the um, firefighters, the Parks and Rec, Public Works, and Town Hall all expire June thirtieth. Okay. The others are already expired, so we're working to get those closed as soon as possible. So you'll be busy. <laughs> I think so. Yes. Okay. All right. Good luck. And thank Great. you. Thank you for your support. Okay, next up is Board of Assessment Appeals, page 15. Just want to say welcome. I'm not here alone this year for Board of Assessment Appeals. This is Dennis Nardella. He's usually at Board of Assessment Appeals hearings the time of the budget hearing, so this is oh, yeah. first Welcome. budget presentation. Oh, this is my second one, but second. She said I couldn't have any candy from her room if I didn't. Come. It's been a while. <laughs> that was a deal breaker. Guys, we got you covered. She cuts you off. Oh, <laughs> thank, you. thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we did just finish up uh, all of our hearings, and it, I don't have that last year's number, but I'm uh, I'm assuming that we have an increase of probably. 5,400 over last year's number, and that's pretty much uh, to account for the three additional um, members we're going to need to be appointed by Jamie to take care of the overflow from uh, next year's um, reevaluation that's going to be coming in. So uh, any increase should be covered by 2% uh, uh, for some of the salaries over last year, and then the addition of the three additional uh, right. board members that will be appointed for uh, next year's uh, hearings. So we've got a physical reval, which which is uh, going to be dated 10-1-19? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the hearings would be in the spring of 2020. Right. Right. Okay. Questions on the ZBA? The uh, Board of Appeals? Yeah. All set? 
Victor? If you're having a physical reval, won't your appeals really soar right next year? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and that's reason. covered in here? That's well, right. That's the reason for the, the three, three? New, the three new appointees to the board. Okay. Thank you. Because you have three that are elected, and Jamie gets to appoint three more. We, uh, Victor, Supplemental we, uh, members. Jen will, Jen will assign, the, uh, Jennifer will assign the, the correct number of days. You know, for example, this year we, we only had to have, you know, one or two days for the hearings. Um, with the three members next year, we might have you know three or four days with the six members. It all depends on just how many appeals come in. Right. Yeah. Done that. Yeah. Okay. And any other questions from the board? Questions from general public? RTM members? Okay, we're good on that one. Um, thanks, Dennis. And uh, the. Uh, Assessor's budget on page 14, Barbara. Okay, um, as far as the personnel, the only increase in the salaries right now is mine because the other staff members are under contract, which is up the end of June, so there's no increase in their salaries. Um, the part-timers, there is an increase. The overtime is anything up to 40 hours because their work week is 35 and then anything over based on the reval. I kept that the same. However, that page is missing from the book. So um, it's the same as last year. I mean, I can get you the page, but it's not here okay. right for it. Um, longevity, everything else is the same except for, well, the crew payroll went up under personnel. And basically, the only thing that went up, under, except for the cost of subscriptions, which went up um, for the for the things that we use under subscriptions, books, and let's see if that is in here. Okay. So total request of uh, four hundred forty thousand eight ninety nine, increase of seven thousand twelve dollars. Okay. Questions on the operating budget for assessors? There's just one thing I wanted to mention that we did include this year. We came across a new program from Tax Management, which is a software program to help us price personal property on new businesses. It gives us an overall um, research area where you can go in if there's, a say, a new tattoo parlor in town and they won't let us come in and inspect. We can give get an average-based and bring it down to the actual local cost of what equipment would be used in that facility to put a value on it for personal property. And that cost was, I believe, under appraisal. Is that the 32,000? Yeah. G and K, you said? No, it's tax management. Oh, tax management. Oh, I see, uh, $3,000. Yeah, 3000 okay. Anything else just based on subscription increases? And membership increases. That was not gotcha. And my revaluation sinking fund is on page 68. I worked with Jim on that based on the, what our budget we have left and what we're going to need in the near future. Page 68, you say? 68. Top line. Seventy-five thousand. Mm -hmm. yep. The next three valves in 2024, which is an update. Gotcha. Your next physical won't be until 2029. Okay, Barb. Thanks. All depends on legislature, though, what they decide to do. If they decide to do a regionalization, and then everything is going to change. Right. Okay, questions on either the capital request of 75000 for reval or the operating budget on page 14. So, so what's in the sinking fund? Are we going to add seventy-five to it? Yes. What's the total estimated cost? For the, for the for updated one coming up? Yes. For the, yeah. Well, depending on who is here, 
last last time we did a lot of the work ourselves in staff and even though we projected around 360,000 it cost us less than that because we did a lot of work in-house that's for 2024 that's what it was back but in isn't there a sinking fund already yes. Set us, yes. and how much is that what is currently in that right yeah. now I'm not yeah last sure. year uh, we, we started the year with 518 in there okay thank you Okay. But we're still paying for the current reval out of that. I see. The physical one that's going on there. Thanks. Other questions? Questions from the RTM members? General public? All set. Thank you, Barbara. All right. Thank you. Next is East Shore District Health, page 43. Yeah. Right. Joe. Um, I know I have a reputation for bad puns, but we, we learned, uh, I guess, late today that uh, they had a health issue, literally. So, um, okay. So, so Mike is unable to, to be here. Okay. Um, so, uh, we we could do one of two things. Uh, we could talk about uh, the increase, um, which is about 3.6 percent, or roughly nine thousand uh, dollars. We could ask him to come back. Uh, one of the things that kind of uh, stood out when we uh, talk to Mike is that, uh, you know, his budget is uh, experiencing a, a lot of changes and, uh, you know, because, for example, his employees are also in that MERS program. Uh, the other night when I was talking about the pension changes, how they yeah. affect us, uh, they affect him as well. And so uh, essentially the uh, philosophy that Mike communicated to us that the district is doing is uh, similar uh, to what we did in uh, 2017 when we had all the uh, proposed cuts from the governor's budget, whereas what we decided to do is, okay, we're going to try to insulate the taxpayer, and that's yep. when we use like $6.4 million from fund balance. So basically the district is taking the position that they're going to ask uh, the members, uh, member towns, for, for a relatively small increase, and then they'll try to work their budget so that they don't have to ask for more money. Do we know what their fund balance is? Uh, I don't have it uh, on me, but, but that's one of the things that they're also looking at is their reserve fund balance so that they're not asking us for okay for all of that. Maybe you can just get an idea what they're going to ask. Yeah, I may, I may have it back in my office because okay. I know I've asked it before. So. Okay, so for now we'll uh, defer. We've got some information. Um, and if we have additional questions or he wants to make a presentation, he can come on Thursday. Come on Thursday. Okay. But for now, I think we're somewhat satisfied. We've listened to his uh, presentation in prior okay. years. Um, but I, again, I will ask if there's any special requests or questions from the RTM or members of the public on this particular budget. They can raise it now. Frank. Chairman, I mean, if he, you know, he's not here, but if he was, I would ask him. Uh, there was a big article in the Register a couple of weeks ago, front page, that the restaurants are not being inspected. Um, that I guess that the ones they thought were going to be uh, some kind of an issue, you know, yes, those were inspected, but there were other ones that, you know, they weren't for like a year, I think it said, maybe even two. So, I mean, I'd like to know what's what's going on with that. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. We will ask Jim to relay that message to him. Yeah, to, Frank, to what, I would, what I would suggest, too, in the meantime, is that uh, uh, you, you may not have seen it, and it might have been Saturday, uh, but if, if you Google with the New Haven Register, um, Mike Pascasulo in the opinion uh, section of the paper wrote a response to that article. Okay. So. Oh, okay. Uh, He's Thanks, on. Jim. He's on record with a response to that. So, okay. Um, oh, that's great. If that's you great to, to know. Thank you. Yeah, well, I could probably find yeah. it again. Yeah. So it's in about the inspection back backlogs. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you. Frank. Thank you. Okay. Other questions? On that, if not, we will move on to the elderly services, page forty-two. <laughs> Welcome, Dagmar. <laughs> How are you? Good. Crest of 428,336, increase of 6,235. Want to hit the highlights? Uh, 
Yeah, um, most of that increase is contractual into salaries. Uh, there's only a few in my operating side that had a change under my employment testing. Uh, we're changing our vendor to the one that the town uses. The town recently changed their vendor and the price went up slightly, but it's local rather than sending my drivers out to hand it to be able to go to uh, a local vendor. And also the CDL drivers, when they reach the threshold of 70, they have to get tested twice a year, go in for their testing. So we had a couple of people meet that threshold. So there's a slight increase there. Um, all other line items stay the same, and there was a decrease in my part-time because my uh, commission went from six meetings a year to four, so we only had to budget in for four meetings instead of six. But everything else we held the line on. Okay, thank you. Questions on the operating budget for elderly services? Questions from the public or our TM members on this budget? With none, Dagmar, uh, you have capital requests in? We do. We worked on our sinking fund with Mr. Finch, and we're, we have delayed uh, replacing some of our vehicles, and now we're back on track. We had a change of staff and our transportation coordinator, so it delayed it a little bit this year. But we are in the process of beginning to spec out our 12 passenger replacement, and then that's in the current fiscal year. Next fiscal year, we'll replace one of our 18 passengers. Gotcha. They're 10 years old, so it's it's time. Okay. Great questions on this capital request. Um, no questions. Questions from the RTM members, the members of the public. And the, uh, the projects, the the uh, building project is going well. It is. We're looking toward a, a late May, hopefully, uh, CO on late yeah. May. So we're on target. It's looking good. Good. We're excited. Yeah. Very yeah. excited. Good. Good. Yeah. Late May. All right. Thanks, Dave. Okay. Thank Take you. care. Next is uh, IT information technology, page twenty-eight. Good evening. At a request of $804,388, a decrease of $33,242. Yep. Um, we have a, a few decreases this year. I was able to renegoti renegotiate with some of our vendors, change some vendors, get prices down by bargaining them, that if they didn't decrease their price, I would move to another vendor. Um, and a lot of projects that we had when I came on board six and a half years ago have now been completed and our technology is, uh, the proper technology I should say, is in place and lasting longer, so we're in good, uh, good shape. Um, there really is nothing major, everything is the same. Our largest line, line item is, is usually for repair and maintenance contracts <coughs> and software. And we managed to actually get some decreases in that because I changed, again, I've changed vendors due to our backup software and so forth. Um, so unless you have a question in the operating budget, there's really nothing stellar going on there. <laughs> okay. Questions on the uh, operating budget for IT? Question, Joe? Sure. Uh, over the last two or three years, you, you've been under budget each, each, each year. You know, you're a minus four. Uh -huh. It'd be commended. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and you want to go on? Any other questions on the operating budget? Frank, you have a question? Come on up. Uh, page 75 gives the rates of pay, right, Ms. Karen? And yeah. uh, just out of curiosity, how come we're seeing a decrease in the pay of... Uh, Network engineer. Yes, exactly. 
because of the union contract, we have a network engineer who is leaving in April, and the new person come on board will be at 80, 85 percent of that salary. Thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thanks, Frank. Any other questions on the operating budget? Uh, and do we have capital budget, uh, Deb? Yep, $96,666. It's a project that the IT department is doing with the uh, police department. really encompasses all of the town. Um, so what we need to do is in town hall and over at the police, we need to update. Well, we need to update our CCTV, our, our closed circuit television um, cameras and video software. <coughs> So if we do this in conjunction with the police who already have a software called Milestone in place, they have the enterprise system in town. We're able to keep our costs down by buying just the lower price license for the cameras instead of having to buy the network enterprise version of the software. And then at the police station, we're going to purchase a, a like a NAS, a <coughs> network storage for all the video. It's a repository. And this is the same software that we envision also at the community house and our other buildings at other locations. And this way, the feed is over the internet and dispatch can be watching it. We need to upgrade the cameras in the town clerk's office. Right now in town hall, all of the cameras are at Lisa's desk and the town clerk. It shouldn't be that way. So we're going to change this. We're going to upgrade some of the cameras that are in there to have a better view. And then we're going to move them from being in the town clerk's office. She should not have this responsibility of watching the video feeds in town hall. It's going to go into the network server room. And then the cameras can be viewed over IP or at the police dispatch or whoever else we deem to have permission to view them. Now, there is also in here, I have Captain Dunbar here, if there's any questions. Uh, part of the ask is for also additional cameras over at the police department in their garage. I understand that they have some broken and older cameras that need to be upgraded. And the rest of the ask is really for the upgrade of the milestone software. We have to move to a newer version. The version we have no longer is going to be compliant with our other systems. It's outdated. It's now, I think, seven years old, that version. So that combined is $96,666. Uh, 96, Thanks, Deb. Sure. Questions on this uh, IT capital request? Yeah, yeah. Charlie? Hey, Deb, on the, uh, on the cameras, mm -hmm. they're mounted in the building. Are these cameras mounted in the building? Some of them. Some of them well, are like inside in and outside. Police headquarters, who would monitor those cameras? Um, well, well, who I looks imagine. at those cameras? I mean, that's not fed back to the town also, somehow. No, I mean, it's over IP. Anyone who we deem to have the responsibility to view them, but I imagine dispatch will be viewing them. Dispatch monitors uh, our in house cameras um, as well as a few supervisors. It's very controlled on who can see it. Um, this is part of what we've been trying to do with working with the school system when we need to to be able to monitor incidents before we arrive. Similar to that, if we all get on the same platform, we'll have that ability. And one of the problems we have is that there's some shortfalls in the building where we need some additional cameras. And uh, so that, that's how the platform would work. Uh, uh, I only monitor it. I don't know. Are these new or are these replacements? Some of them will be a few additional new ones. Um, pretty much right now, most of the cameras that we have um, are on warranty. They don't even make the cameras we have anymore, so okay. sometimes we pick up a newer camera when they swap one out when something's trying as part of a maintenance agreement. Okay. And the Thank cameras in Town Hall that we're replacing are over 15 years old. Very good. Thank you. Okay. And, and so who's going to have the responsibility for watching the town hall? Did that come back you to said you? said dispatch. 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 Yeah. dispatch. Yeah, I'm not sure who made that arrangement. I'd have to ask the chief. Uh, that was unknown to me as far as that aspect of it goes, but it would be in a secure area. Okay. Victor? Isn't the main purpose of this to record what's happening so you can go back and see an incident more than what's currently happening? Or? Could be both. Um, 
Right. We used to have a camera at Town Hall where we were able to monitor some things. I think that became defunct, but um, a lot of it is recording, so you can go back. Um, but some of it is live stream that you can see what's going on when you're well, going into a situation. Though, right? It is both. Yeah. It is both. The, the NAS repository that's in this budget will allow us to keep feeds of up to, depending on how high definition the video is, 7 to 14 days. So we'll be okay. able to go back yeah. and, and view if we see there's an incident. So you don't have to necessarily be live monitoring mm -hmm. everything. Exactly. No. Exactly. Okay. Other questions on that capital request? Questions from the general public, RTM members? Okay, thanks, the Captain, and thanks, uh, Deb, for the presentation. <coughs> Next up is Human Services, page 67. Welcome, Peter. Good evening. Good evening. Never. So the uh, the major highlights of my budget uh, is, uh, as you can see, is the wages and salaries because uh, we have a, um, a full-time case manager was put into the budget this year. Last year, that person was in for half a year. So the increase is because um, she's been put into the, um, the full, for full-time. Um, the other change is the other uh, purchase services. I, I was asking for a per diem um, social worker at uh, for 10 hours a week for 50 weeks. And the other increase, major increase, or the new part of it is the relocation. Catherine didn't give it a good name yet, but it's just re relocation services. What that is essentially is that we have an unfunded mandate by the state. Uh, it's called Uniform Relocation Act. If someone gets displaced because of uh, their dwelling has been uh, deemed uninhabitable, the town has a responsibility to um, assist the person. Unfortunately, it changed the law, so it, it's going to cost us a little bit more if the event happens. Um, we pay up to four thousand dollars to kind of get the person settled, but. We're also responsible for um, moving the person to a location, storing their belongings. Um, it sets at a limit where I think four thousand dollars is the is the max, but that could uh, it could go up. I would think we're, we're going to have a meeting next week to kind of uh, with the town council to kind of sort that out. But it's something that we have to do. We had two instances last year. We were lucky that we didn't have to pay a lot of money, but we're concerned that if, because of these new requirements, uh, if something like this happens, we need to have something in a budget. So this is a state law? State law. Can yes, you, it's you uh, Connecticut Statute 8 266. What is it? 8 266. 266. And when, when was that passed? That's, that's been around for a while. Um, we recently looked at it because we were developing a process to uh, to address this. Because what we should be doing, part of the part of the law, is that we can go back to the landlord <clears throat> and ask for the for them to um, reimburse us for the costs. So we're putting in a um, a process in place. So it should be letters and um, outreach to the uh, to the landlords to get our money back. Um, We've been lucky that we haven't had a major incident in town where it's going to cost us more money. So <clears throat> now that we're going to have a process in place, then we can actually go after uh, the landlord if an event happens. Are we able to put a lien on the property? We can put a lien on the property, yes. And we, we would do that? We would do that. We haven't done that because we haven't spent a lot of money in um, helping people that have been displaced. We've had, uh, this past year, we had two instances, and uh, the, the, the tenants we're able to find additional or other housing, and then we put them up in a motel for a couple days. So this is after they're evicted? No, after there's an uh, incident with their, their dwelling. So if there's a fire and they can't go back into that, we have to help them with some kind of housing. If there is a health uh, issue um, and the dwelling gets um, um, placard, then we have to help them find another, another living situation. With the health and safety Absolutely. Event type of right. thing. 
we have to actually go and find rents for them, which is which is something new. So. Okay. Um, anything else in the budget you want to point out? I think those are the only three things that were that were pretty significant. Everything else is um, basically the same as, as last year. Okay. Questions from Peter on the operating? Uh, Peter, Charlie? I thought he, I heard you say 4,000. Is it eight, 4,000 or 8,000? It's fourth, it's the way the law is, we have to pay up to $4,000 yeah. to assist them. Um, we're going to go through the, the law and look at it more specifically. We have a meeting next week with the town council so we can clarify exactly what we have to do. Okay, so that's not a firm number. That's not a firm number, no. Okay. It could fluctuate. Okay. So definitely maybe, Joe. Thank you. Okay, other questions on this budget? Questions from RTM members, members of the public? Uh, no capital items? Just the, the request that Scott request put in for the through. generator and what's going to um, the, the, the leakage that we have now around the counseling center. The moisture and as far as the revenues, while we have you here, they're uh, rel they're actually a little less than that. No, they're no, more. They're, they're more. more. Okay, more. right column. I got you. Yeah. So you're up to five hundred thousand on yes. counseling fees, thirty-two thousand on the YSB grant, and a million eighty on. Operating transfer in, which is the town's contribution for a million uh, six twelve. Okay, Charlie. Hey, Peter, does BH Care give us a donation? No, they used to, but when they got cut by the state, yeah, then they cut what they were giving us. Okay. okay other questions or comments on this budget? Not. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. Take care. Easy. Next, next budget is tax collector, page 16. Hello. Welcome, Roberta. How are you? Hey, how's everybody? Good, thank you. Good. Okay. No major, major changes. Um, if you'll just you'll notice on um, the accrued payroll expense is included this year. Um, 2020 will be a sticker year. Grantfordites yeah. are really, really passionate about their stickers. I, <laughs> um, and also the memberships, conferences, and meetings has increased. We do have a new hire, our new sewer assessment clerk. So she is going through the certification process. She's taking class one now. I'm in class three or four. I'm working my way through it. So uh, that causes that increase. Other than that, there aren't really any major changes. Okay. Um, so total request of $323,842. Yes, $848, a decrease of $94,000. Dollars. Uh, I think that's caused by the um, tax refunds. That's always a number that I get from my friend, Mr. Finch, there. Right, so, so. we're estimating uh, less activity in that for this year. Well, a lot, a lot of the appeals are starting to, are starting to wind down. Starting to wind down, down are, trying to take care of Some that may take longer, it may go into another fiscal year as well. So. Okay. And so, uh, your collection rates, uh, you agree with Mr. Finch on his, <laughs> his high standard he's set for you? Yes, I do. Yeah, um, we're, the, we're the same mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I will say this, my goal is by the time I come back to see you next year, that that will be higher. I'm finding that through the certification process, I'm being exposed to what different municipalities do. Um, Branford is a kinder, gentler town as far as collection, aggressive collection efforts, but there are small things that we can do to increase this. So I hope by the time I see you next year, I'll give you a better number. So you're going to shoot for 99 percent? I'm going to shoot for it. Okay. While still being kind and gentle. <laughs> Trying. Right. It, it'll Try. cost her the election, but she's going to get the collection right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Roberta. Questions on the tax collector's budget, page 16, from the board members? Questions from RTM members or members of the public? 
All right, you're good. Thank you. Thank you. Take Have a good care. night, everybody. Good night. Next is executive budget on page 11. Okay. Uh, I see Catherine being in the book. Uh, so it, it's a $12,805 increase for a 3.6% 3 .6 increase. Uh, just hit the highlights, 1.5% increase in salaries and wages. Those are made for uh, uh, assistant at 2.5% as well as the uh, special projects coordinator at 2.5%. Um, board clerks, there is a jump on that, 2% uh, for the uh, clerk for uh, the Board of Selectmen's meetings as well as, remember we had the Public Building Commission uh, clerk. We did up that. Um, that is a uh, um, you know a significant commitment in terms of tracking uh, the projects that are going on, uh, uh, the, the pay apps, the change orders, the logs that we keep. Um, so it is a, a pretty significant commitment, but it was definitely um, I think uh, worthwhile to have that clerk put on that board. Or commission. Uh, let's see here. Um, if you go in the other major changes here, consulting services did increase that request by five thousand dollars. It was typically funded at fifteen thousand, went to twenty thousand dollar request. I'm ready just um, to look at some additional things. You may recall that I had a, uh, a consultant come in and evaluate the. Uh, uh, Human Resources Department prior to us uh, hiring. I, I'd like to do some additional, bring in probably some consulting uh, firms to really uh, study some other departments and how we're operating mm -hmm. and perhaps uh, streamline some things as well as just restructure. Okay. Questions from the first selectman on the executive budget request of 372189 Come on. No question. No questions from the uh, ITM or general public? Thanks, on, Frank. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I think we're all set. Uh, next would be legal budget on page 18. I just wanted, we had the 300000 uh, also a capital, Joe. Oh, capital? Yeah, that was for the Coastal Resiliency Fund. Yeah, it's not, a, it's, in, it's on the 5000 accounts. It's, it's a contribution into the fund. Yeah, I found no capital it. project associated. I, 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 we saw you tried to bury it. Uh, yeah. page, <laughs> that page 64. Nah. What, <laughs> the page is in there? Uh, Do I just touch on that real quick? Catherine asked me to take a pass on that one, but... Uh, all right, so we'll look, we're going to look at um, yeah, what, what page is that, Jim? That's, no, that's not at 64. It's uh, it was, it was, it was, there's a capital. I think it was the. So if you go to uh, page 59. Page 59. Page 59. Page 59, you have a line item with a new account number, uh, Coastal Resiliency Fund, 300,000 request. Yeah, uh, again, when we set the fund up in January and February, uh, we contemplated, you know, putting the million dollars in, and we also contemplated making annual appropriations into the fund. Uh, the questions that came up at the time were, uh, well, how will money be spent out of that? And I, I think there was, uh, at the end, universal agreement that, uh, you know, that would be something that would be initiated by the first selectman, uh, and then come to the Board of Finance. So currently we're... Uh, Looking at this, like we're in the accumulation phase, uh, you know, three hundred thousand dollars is probably about, you know, maybe thirty basis points of a percent of our of our, uh, you know, last year's levy, which is about hundred million dollars. Uh, when we were talking about modeling out, uh, discussing this, we used three seven point three seven five because it was the three hundred seventy fifth anniversary. You know, kind of was catchy at the time, uh, but basically. Uh, so this is consistent with what we represented that uh, we would do. It's uh, you know consistent with uh, some of the public statements we made in terms of uh, trying to uh, 
on that. Uh, I, I received today a report, which uh, some of you have seen uh, through email uh, from uh, uh, Standard & Poor's. So they had mentioned that they were going to cite Brantford's Coastal Resiliency uh, funding efforts in, a, in an upcoming article. That article came out last week. They sent me a copy today. And, uh, and they do highlight Brantford, Connecticut. They talk about what we did. Uh, in the margins of the article, they said some issuers will choose to establish new reserves dedicated to funding adaptive infrastructure. Well, well, that's clearly us. Uh, they talked about how other uh, communities are essentially uh, restricted based on their pension and other retirement obligations and high debt burdens. So uh, when we presented in January, we, we, we commented that uh, based on where we stand with our self-insurance funds, based on where we stand with our pension funding and our OPEB funding and uh, workers' comp, et cetera, that we felt we were in a position to sort of look at this as sort of the next liability to try to attack. And, uh, you know, while they, and they addressed that in the article, too. They said, uh, while some uh, issuers, uh, uh, those with especially strong balance sheets, are possessing the political and capital and will, may choose to establish and fund new reserves dedicated to funding adaptive in infrastructure. So, so that, that would essentially be us as well. Uh, and like I said, they gave examples of uh, a couple uh, communities, uh, the use of the state of Massachusetts, who was uh, essentially uh, bonding for this. Uh, and then also uh, some of them have created new tax streams to fund coastal resilience and, and climate change issues. Uh, and, then, and, I, and what they said about us, they said, uh, uh, in Brantford, Connecticut, municipal leaders have established a fund to support improvements to make the community more resilient to sea level rise. Brantford leaders have taken steps to transfer money from the general fund to a new coastal resiliency fund. The town has dedicated, now we dedicate a percentage, but you know, we talked about funding this on a uh, basis going forward, a percentage of its property tax levy to the fund, providing a clear revenue stream to augment the initial $1 million investment. It plans to invest the monies to begin accumulating interest income and amassing, and this, these are again their words, more ammunition to support its fight against rising sea levels that threaten its community. So, that, so that's how they uh, highlighted us. The, it's uh, like a 20 page report. We're towards the end of it. Uh, it's part of their 2019 U.S. Municipal Green and Resiliency Outlook. It says, well, the sub label market uh, rebound. And so they're talking about the whole. Uh, industry, but, you know, they had a section in the end about uh, what, you know, some of the strategies that, are, that they've seen out there. So. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Appreciate it. And, uh, it's, a good, it's a good thing. Uh, questions with regards to the request for 300000 for the Coastal Resiliency Fund? Capital item? Questions or comments from yeah, the... Yeah, I was going to say the other thing. Jamie uh, politely reminded me. The, uh, Jamie and I were up in Hartford uh, yesterday, and because uh, one of the things we talked about was that we were proposing legislation to uh, give us the investment flexibility. Uh, the higher compounding rate would allow the assets to accumulate faster, similar to uh, the way we manage our pension and OPEB funds. Uh, it was a, probably a different concept than what the Environmental Committee typically hears, uh, but uh, you know, we gave them sort of a simple uh, example and among some more complicated examples, but for example, we talked about what's commonly referred to as the rule of 72, and I, I know the folks who are bankers up there are smiling because they're familiar with that. Uh, it's to, so if you take a rate in time, that's how your money doubles. So at 9%, it doubles every eight years, at 6%, it doubles every 12 years, and at 4%, it doubles every 18 years. And so what we were saying to them is by being able to invest it at a higher compounding rate, instead of doubling every 18 years at 4%, you know, we may be able to double it every 12 years at 6 percent, and, and the doubling of the future value grows faster, then that, that's more assets that are available to uh, match that liability associated with climate change and coastal resiliency, which is a, obviously uh, a growing liability. So we think conceptually uh, the folks on the committee under, understood that. Uh, we don't know why anybody would vote against it, but um, again, trying to handicap uh, the outcome of votes in Hartford is probably not a a good industry for me, uh, but basically, uh, we think overall the feedback was positive. Uh, we've seen uh, a number of folks now write testimonials in addition to ours uh, on the legislation, so we think it's all a good sign. So. Okay. 
Thanks, Jim. Okay, so where does uh, Sean Scanlon and our other people stand well, with it? I, I, I suspect they're, that they're all in favor, of it, and I can say two of them definitely. Um, Christine Cohen, uh, Senator Cohen, is the co-chair of the Environmental Committee. Uh, so she is uh, definitely behind this. Uh, she was proud that uh, Branford was actually in her district was proposing this. Uh, we also uh, got a letter of support from the Guilford uh, uh, First Selectman, uh, Matt Hoey III. He, he actually sent a letter as well. And, uh, and Robin Comey is also a co-sponsor of the bill. Okay. So, so they are uh, squarely uh, behind us. Okay, you have other questions on this issue? Thank you. All right, we'll move on to the next budget, uh, legal services on page 18. Request of $417,000, increase of $82,000. Uh, okay. Um, Jamie, you want to cover this? Yeah, so in uh, council and legal advice, there's a $32,000 increase and uh, and tax appeals a $50,000 increase, amounting to a $82,000 increase for a total of 24.5% increase overall. Uh, you know, for counsel and legal advice is certainly, uh, as we've said many times, event driven. We uh, did increase that uh, as stated. Um, you may recall the last couple of years we did transfer money in to uh, uh, cover uh, expenditures that were done. Okay occurred that year, um, so we increased it to try to reflect what we see out there and knowing that there are some uh, some things that will be driving that budget. So we're trying to more accurately reflect at the beginning of the budget process uh, what we expect. Um, again, a lot of it is event-driven. If we had to make adjustments during years, we're just trying to go into it with a clearer picture. Um, Tax appeals, we do we increase that uh, for what we project to be um, appeals brought forward um, this next fiscal year. We still have just a handful, maybe four uh, or so remaining that will be carried over, and we expect uh, probably up to another 16 or so uh, uh, to be carried over into next or brought forward next year, as well as. Um, we will be doing a full reval, although there won't be a major driver yet to this uh, account. There will be some uh, expenses uh, related to the reval, um, some more legal advice, things that are getting ready for the reval and prep work. But um, depending on how that shakes out, uh, uh, you know, those those tax appeal lines will probably carry over to the next year. Uh, 2021. Okay. All right. Questions on the legal services budget request 417,000. Charlie? No? I'm good. <clears throat> Anybody else? Questions from the RTM members and general public? Thanks. Next is town clerk, page 17. asking for 259.064. It's a increase of 1.3% over the current year. Um, I've got three full-time union, union employees. Uh, their bargaining unit uh, expires June 30th of this year, so there's no uh, negotiated increase at this time. Um, a proposed or suggested increase for the town clerk of 2% and I've got two approved payroll days. Um, I've eliminated the education incentive, not because we are a proponent of education, but uh, because uh, we're kind of in between um, certifications for one of the assistants who hasn't <coughs> gone to the next level yet. So that's a few years out. Um, on the non-personnel side, I'm down 300 from the current year. I've increased office supplies. I'm expecting that copy paper might go up. Um, that's really what that increase is. And um, professional development, I've increased it by $250 to allow for um, 
myself to go to the next certification classes. Next month I should be achieving my second of three certifications and then in fiscal 20 I'll begin um, courses for the third certification. Okay. Questions uh, from the town clerk? Request $259,064. Bob? Lisa, did we receive any revenue from folks coming in doing title searches and getting copies? So the revenue is on page eight, and I'm proposing an increase in revenue of 57925 over the current year. Um, so that reflects licensing. Um, real estate conveyance tax, was, which is a quarter of a percent on each um, conveyance, that's to the town. Um, the e-commerce revenue share, that's an online portal where folks from home or from offices can purchase uh, copies of land records for a dollar a page, as well as in the other monies is um, among other things, copy fees for folks that come into the office also at a dollar a copy. Dog licenses, too. That's it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Any, any other questions on this budget, town clerk budget? I got one. Charlie. I think this is the first year I haven't seen something on the vault. All right, are we done with that? That's all taken care of. So we've had about five meetings. Uh, we're getting very close to um, going out for proposals. Um, we've met with two architects, um, the building official as well as um, the um, fire marshal and Scott Denhart and I have been meeting several times to vet out what the scope of the project is, how we're going to logistically handle having the records publicly available during construction. Um, I've worked with DuPont storage systems to determine how many rolling carts we need for books that need to be moved out of the construction zone, um, how, how and where we're going to, I'm learning a lot about construction, how and where we're going to construct the um, temporary wall around the exterior wall of the vault where they would be working to remove the windows. And then lastly, um, looking at the cost to upgrade from water sprinkler suppression, fire suppression to the, um, what are the numbers again? It's Halon? The What it takes out the, the oxygen in the room. Um, so we're going to be state of the art when this thing's done. It's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it's real close. I'm excited. Also on that note, Charlie, uh, if you came into the vault now, you'd find one wall with no books in the, the racks. And um, just yesterday, the state library came and took 216 volumes out. Uh, those volumes have been recreated. They are. Um, recreated into smaller books that we can store two to one uh, yep. in storage space. Um, so they're filmed, they're recreated, and we were in essence storing double volumes of everything. So the state took the, the older ones out. So that frees up probably about eight years of storage space mm -hmm. capacity. And what did the state do with those records? Uh, they archive them at the State Library. Uh, <coughs> All right, Lisa, thank you. Other questions or, of the town clerk's budget? Uh, questions from the RTM members, members of the public? If not, we'll go to legislative on page 10, request of 18187 increase of $47. There's um, the total personnel side is uh, $10,037. That's an RTM moderator and two clerks. Uh, proposed uh, increase of 2%. Uh, 
on those. And then on the non-personnel side, 8150. And um, that's a reduction of $150 in office supplies. So overall, there's a $18,187 or a $47 increase from current year. Thanks, Lisa. Questions on this budget? Questions from the RTM members or members of the public? Okay, if, if not, we, then we will recess tonight and uh, reconvene on Thursday night to hear the rest of the department's presentations. Thank you. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.